Hello, BookTube. Well, I'm not only doing a blob watch for our Steve stream tonight, I'm in the middle of a blob watch. That tiny little system, that little sliver, that ribbon of rain actually did come here. It actually did arrive shortly before sunset uh, with light rain. Uh, the day was just fine. The day was bright and sunny, just lovely uh, and mild as well. But, but uh, rain did come in, so I'm in the midst of a blob. Uh, which really makes me pine for Coachella. I'm, of course, my Instagram feed is entirely full of pretty boys with cheekbones cavorting at Coachella. Uh, they all have their different feeds. They all have their different uh, concentrations and upload schedules and whatnot. And I always forget, every year I forget, that they're all going to go to Coachella for one reason or another. They're all going to go there to see and be seen uh, to screw other people's agents, to make all sorts of contacts, and also to engage in what I imagine is a nightmarish amount of logistics. Uh, because all of these people smoke a lot. And Coachella is all about everyone filming everyone all the time. It's You go there to be seen. But they're also going there to, to smoke like crazy. And <laughs> so those two things don't go together. They can't have footage like that showing up on their, on their streams or somebody else's feed. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know what kind of scandals will erupt from Coachella this year. I always think back, what was it, five years to uh, Gage Gomez and uh, James Charles and the scandal of Coachella, <laughs> the, whole, the whole scandal that rocked the YouTube commentariat of the, of the drama channels for a, about an hour. <laughs> oh, I don't, I think I would absolutely hate being there, but, uh, when it's a gray and drizzly day, I naturally start uh, pining <laughs> in, in that direction. But I don't have an actual subject, despite the fact that I put a killer clown on the thumbnail, which might make you think that I'm still going to talk about serial killers. Famously, John Wayne Gacy is uh, often colloquially, although incorrectly, referred to as a killer clown, as people point have, who know the subject, including the people who know the subject a little too well, uh, John Wayne Gacy never killed while dressed as a clown. <laughs> so calling him a killer clown is technically inaccurate. It just adds uh, that that the, his penchant for, for dressing as a clown just adds to the element of creepiness uh, in the whole story. In, in the, whole, the whole John Wayne Gacy story, which is, currently on the roulette wheel of concentration for all the various marquee serial killers and all the ones who aren't, I uh, I always forget that a lot of people watch these Steve streams who don't leave comments on them, who don't actually ever make themselves known. And I heard from one of those people as a result of last night's Steve stream, I heard from uh, one of those people who uh, has made a fairly serious quasi-professional study out of not just serial killers, active serial killers, the ones who are out there in America today, and the very latest from, I guess, the dedicated Facebook groups and chat boards that talk about them, talk about what do we know? Do, can, have, we, have we moved this case at all? Is anything here important? Uh, the impression I get from the screenshots that, were, that I was sent is that those chat boards are not voyeuristic weirdos. <laughs> for the most part, there are people who, for whatever reason, really want uh, justice here. They really want... I'm trying, to, I'm trying to show the bean. If she's going to be so cute and photogenic, I should probably try to show her in the video. Uh, people who, in, in these, in these uh, chat groups, who really want to piece together, to catch somebody. They, they really want to catch a killer before a killer strikes again. That I find that very fascinating. The whole subject, actually, in a macabre kind of way, is fascinating. I, I had... Uh, a video meeting today on the subject, a, a video conference meeting. Certainly uh, a great luxury of the of our post-COVID era of the 21st century. Who knows if video conferencing would have had the turbo boost that it got if it hadn't been for COVID. Uh, but now that it is not only, not only uh, possible, but extremely common, it's just expected, it is a great luxury. Uh, because you can learn a lot from five seconds of video conferencing someone with, that you could not possibly learn in five months of emailing with them. 
And I think that's why a lot of people set up these video conferences so that those things will be exchanged. That nonverbal information will be exchanged between all parties. Uh, and that happened today. I think this video was largely, I mean, it had a, a technical reason, but I think its purpose was largely to see if the parties involved all like each other, could all envision working with each other. And tell you the truth, I did not. I was not easily able to envision that. That meeting went on. It started and stopped. Uh, apparently, taking breaks on video meetings is now accepted, maybe even a normal practice. Taking a little, We're going to take a five-minute break here? Forget that. Uh, but it, it made me late for the Classics & Company video conference that we were doing that was fun. The Classics & Company, we were talking about Middlemarch, and I was late. Uh, but uh, the the roulette wheel that is, that is spinning on all of these high-profile serial killers is, is, for me, stopping on the big one, on you know a, a major, major one, which is John Wayne Gacy, uh, the so-called killer clown. Uh, I'm... I'm reading as much as i can uh, there's a lot more to read a lot there's also there are also dedicated blogs and whatnot that i haven't got to i'm sure there's a raft of youtube videos just i haven't even checked i'm sure there's a ton of them uh, i know some true crime channels so i've been i've been hovering around them maybe subscribing to some of this just it's like one of you mentioned uh one of you mentioned this in a steve stream last night and then somebody also emailed me about la last night and was entirely right this stuff is so soiling it just wears you down the more you spend time with it. Uh, and you have to spend a huge amount, I have to spend a huge amount of time with it if I'm going to do background research of the level that I want to do with this or any subject. So I can't help but notice that so much of the, for instance, writing about, for instance, John Wayne Gacy is so incredibly inconsistent. When did this happen? When did that happen? Who was there? What, who said what? You'd think this would all be a part of the public record and that it would be as absolutely lock solid as, for instance, famously, the details of Jack the Ripper. But no, <laughs> and I can only imagine how worse that will get when I start binging YouTube documentaries. I can only imagine how inconsistent they will be. I haven't done that because video watching it means boy kills world. <laughs> but, but sooner or later, it's not going to mean that. And the, the broad outlines of, of John Wayne Gacy are... Uh, they're just incredible. They're, they're just, all these stories are incredible. They're, none of them seem believable. I can only imagine the surreal horror that must engulf the families when these things happen to them. It must be something that just changes you forever and that you never escape. So that, as one person pointed out in one book that I read, the damage that these, these monsters do is incalculably greater than the body count. At first I thought that was flippant, but the more I read about these things, the more I realize that's absolutely true. In in one case, uh, or what is it? Uh, two cases actually. In in a, the serial killer in Texas called the Candyman. In two separate cases, he killed brothers, and not one in one case killed them together, but in another case, he killed the younger brother and or killed the older brother, and then months later killed the older brother. Struck twice in the same family. No family's going to recover from that. No parents are ever going to be the same after that. Life is not going to be the same after that. So that that truism that they're they're uh, the damage they do is much greater than the body count. That's true. But I, I'm I, when I study John Wayne Gacy, for instance, not that I mean to make this a serial killer Steve stream. Although I I had to chuckle late last night when I was settling down to read. I did chuckle out loud at the sheer amount of Keystone Cops confusion that arose from me melding serial killers and booktubers. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. I'm not asking about booktubers tonight, obviously. We can make another video about that, because I have a ton of follow-up questions. Uh, but in a case like John Wayne Gacy, I was asking last night, what are these creatures? What are they? Uh, because they aren't normal murderers. So what are they? And when you when you study even the bare details of John Wayne Gacy, you see that just in big bright in big bright details. Imagine burying twenty people in a crawl space under your living room. What what on earth? All I can think about. I mean, I thought I thought about the detective's first visit uh, to his house, the fir their first and unproductive visit to his house, where one of the detectives asked to use the bathroom, and he's in the bathroom when the heat comes on. 
And all of a sudden, the vents are working, and they're pumping air through the house, heated air through the house. And he is aware of an ungodly smell. Well, obviously, since there's an abattoir in the call, in the crawl space, he's aware of an ungodly smell. All I could think about was they visited in winter when the heat was on. But Gacy lived there, ate there, and also slept there every night in the summer. I just... <laughs> Anyway, anyway, uh, I don't, I don't quite know why that that's oh that's on my mind because that's the current leader in the carousel of these of these monsters as I go through them all and familiarize myself with patterns and uh, meta patterns things like that to, to to understand this subject. I didn't really, I, I confess a little shamefully, I, I didn't really understand this subject much. I like I mentioned last night, I largely skipped Anne Rule reading Anne Rule's books, even though I knew they were so popular. I largely skipped them. Uh, so I have to confess that myself, like a lot of people, I would imagine, uh, my knowledge of serial killers was Jack the Ripper and Hannibal Lecter <laughs> and, 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 and the Hannibal Lecter stories. When Dr. Chilton says it's so rare to catch one alive, <laughs> something like that. That's what I thought of. Uh, and of course, in the case of the Candyman in, in Texas, they didn't catch him alive because he was shot to death by one by one of his own cohorts, <laughs> but a cohort who didn't want to become a victim. And I've noticed that with a lot of the the uh, online articles and also even a couple of the books that I've read, I haven't really dug in. And I'm sure that the blogs would not be like this. But I've noticed with a with uh, a lot of the more surface level stuff, uh, they don't go into detail about what was done to the victims. And I don't know, I would imagine that if they don't go into that kind of detail, then YouTube videos absolutely could not, because YouTube would censor them. YouTube would stop you from talking about those specifics. In some cases, like for instance, since I've got John Wayne Gacy on the brain, in some cases, we'll never know. We'll never know the specifics. But in other cases, there are survivors and also witnesses. So we do know, and you have to dig to get those and i on the one hand i hate digging to get those details because like you have mentioned that soiling and really gross it can wear you down but on the other hand those details will mean a lot for a broader picture of what these things are of what these monsters are and why they why they do so many similar things i in other words I, the the video conference the meeting that i had today was not promising and thankfully I don't need to take any job. Thankfully, I can only imagine. It must, must, it must be what drives other professional freelancers to drink, is that they do need, they can't pass up a job, even if it's one that's gonna, that might hurt them. In this case, I don't think it would, because despite, I don't want any waggish comments from you, but I'm sane. So I don't think this subject will really hurt me. It's, it's the prospect of working with people that I, that I don't, really like that i don't that i don't think i like especially if in in the case of one of them they're going to nominally be able to call the shots uh, that gives me the willies uh so uh, so i don't actually know if this will happen but if it does i know myself well enough to know that i'm not just going to stick to bradford i know, I know that i'm not going to do that i know that i'm going to i'm going to dig in to the whole subject. I'm going to want to understand it all. And I'm going to want my prose, if I if I end up writing prose on the subject, I want my prose to be knowledgeable. I'd like to think I do that with any subject if I can, but uh anyway, anyway, I uh I don't just want this stream to be about serial killers. I will switch over to the chat so we don't have some Randall Calrissian showing up for the first time ever and saying, why is this guy ignoring the chat? When you all know I give myself about 10 or 15 minutes to perorate, but I imagine we can talk about books too, right? It's a rainy Sunday here in Boston. I've got a stack of books next to me that are on my mind or that I'm working on that don't involve serial killers. <laughs> so, so we can talk about those as well. Uh, but let's, let's go over to the chat uh, and see uh, what people are saying. So Dorothy Satterfield is first. She's a well-known troublemaker. Uh, cue the screeching violins. Okay, that is probably referring to Pennywise, uh, to Pennywise in the thumbnail. And I'm only just realizing now. I thought of uh, Killer Clown because uh, John Wayne Gacy is on my mind. 
I thought I thought I thought about that as a thumbnail. And also because I think that a lot of the people who are swanning and pouting and and duck lip posing at Coachella right now are borderline sociopathic. I really do think they would kill their loved ones for fame. Uh but only now am I realizing that the other Pennywise, the, the Pennywise from the newer version of it was played by the star of Boy Kills World. So that is somehow, that is how my brain is working to connect these dots. Uh, Vivian says, I hope that's not Steve. Dorothy Satterfield says, maybe it's Deb. No, Deb's hair wouldn't be that good on her best day. Uh, Jenny Park says, this is Steve when people have the audacity to question his wisdom. <laughs> I like it when people question my wisdom. It's all a question of how they question my wisdom. You think that the, the friends that I have over here for wine and calzones in person, do you think they spend the whole time genuflecting? No, they most certainly do not. It's a question of how people question my wisdom. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Jenny Park says, oh dear, not even started the stream and already McCarthy is mentioned. Uh, I don't see a mention of McCarthy. Uh, oh, Tolstoy 111 says, is judged from Blood Meridian. Uh, Bailey 321 says, hello, hello to all of you. I wish I could tell. Is it? Have I got sixteen people watching? There's another another number says ninety three, ninety seven, but that can't be true. There can't be a hundred people watching after after fifteen minutes. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to read it. We have a lot to talk about. Not just serial killers. Uh, uh, Maximus Stedich says, "Steve, what biography are you thinking of reading tonight?" I haven't picked one. I haven't spun the wheel yet. I the last one, the one that I did last night. Yeah. <laughs> I, maybe I'll go to military history. That's usually not a dud for me, but I haven't I haven't picked. It's way too early. I'll pick at 11, something like that. Uh, Jasper Antonelli says, clowns aren't scary. Well, okay. <laughs> okay, there, there's a whole stream of YouTube videos uh, that would beg to differ. Uh, Quaint and Curious Volumes is here. No one knows those Coachella scandals. Uh, no, probably not. <laughs> probably not. I, I was... It, it, probably not. Gage Gomez and, Tra and James Charles, probably not. Probably nobody knows that scandal. It was it was pretty neat to watch the drama channels descend on the photographic record of that particular scandal, like Sherlock Holmes, like a whole bunch of little Sherlock Holmes, only if Sherlock Holmes had four pounds of product in his hair, uh, and compare sun angles and day time stamps on the photos and whatnot. Um, DT says, no, I thought the thumbnail meant you were going to talk about Stephen King. Finally, a two-hour stream breaking down why he is not the greatest writer of our age. I've done that many times before, not on stream. Uh, Jasper says, have you heard of the Smiley Case Killer Conspiracy? No, that's not ringing a bell. Like I said, I'm still scratching the surface. This, there is a lot of material out there. I decided early on that if I'm going to be involved, and I'm not sure that I'm not going to be, if I'm going to be involved in this, I decided that I'm going to go major case by major case to start with. I will draw a kind of preliminary constellation that way, and then I will get into the minor cases, the cases that aren't as well known. And also, thanks to this this email yesterday, uh, I can also make headway into the, the open cases, into the active serial killers now. Uh, Andrew Russell says, I read a book recently about Fred and Rose West, and even though I've read plenty of books on serial killers before, it was utterly stomach-churning. Fred and Rose West is stomach-churning. It's it's one of the most bizarre cases. That's saying a lot, but it's it, it has that extra warped, weird psychological element, whereas so many other of the really marquee ones are just a they're just a predator. You don't know why the person's a predator, but you can recognize predator and prey. But Fred and Rose West, there's something else going on there. So, uh, uh, Jenny Parks is responding to, or Jay Nicole is responding to Jenny Parks. DT says, who are your favorite Bonds? Why? Is this a change of subject? A James Bond? Is that what we're referring to? <laughs> Easily my favorite James Bond is Austin Powers. Uh, Quaint and Curious Volumes, it's hilarious when you talk about big time influencer boys as if this lot of bookish ag agoraphobes knows who they are. Well, I, I quickly corrected myself. <laughs> it's just, I, nobody knows who these people are. Uh, N.P. Hunt, there was a case where a wannabe serial killer was caught by one of those chat groups. He was a really bizarre case. Even among these kind of people, he was trying to become an influencer in the 90s. Oh, my. Uh, see, I don't. I need to know the history of the chat boards as well, and that's another huge topic. I can do this. I have the time. I have the ability to do it. I just... 
I don't want to. I don't want to say that I that I don't want to do it because any subject like this is of interest to me. Any subject of any kind, if, as long as people are being passionate about it, is probably of some interest to me. But I don't want to do this particular subject. This particular subject is soiling. It, and I don't want to, to do a super deep dive into this particular subject unless there's money on the table. And there won't be money on the table if uh, if there are jerkwads involved. <laughs> I guess is the short way to put it. Because I... I spent a long time where in a situation, I'm sure a lot of you know the situation, I'm sure a lot of you are in the situation where you have to work with jerkwads. I don't have to do that anymore. And I really don't want to if I don't have to. Uh, a street medic says, I once responded to a body dump, which while it doesn't happen every day, isn't an un as uncommon as most people would think. And the FBI showed up because they thought it involved a serial killer. No, I would imagine that it happens more often than people think, because one of the, the linking things, one of the things that I'm I'm trying to draw broader meta, meta patterns out of looking at all these various monsters, and one of the things that crops up right away is something that cropped up a long, long time ago when I was first beginning to just admit my all-consuming love of murder mysteries, which is the body. What do you do with the body? No matter, no matter the, the garish rituals that you have involved you end up with a hundred pounds of meat and bone that you have to get rid of you have to do something with the body uh and that that's becoming a uh, one angle of approach into this material uh the bookish knitter is here thank you for giving my heart a little jolt with that thumbnail <laughs> jenny Park says i noticed you mentioned me when i was watching the playback at work that's really sweet thank you jay nicole didn't think anyone would notice of course we noticed uh monado says hello uh fee F-I, but, but we're being told it's pronounced fee. It's past midnight here in Northern Ireland, but I've stayed up just for this. Well, isn't that nice? I am your favorite streamer, after all. I just need headphones. I need Joe Rogan-style headphones. Uh, although I still don't know roughly where in Northern Ireland. I used to live in Northern Ireland. It would be great if I knew. Uh, DT says, haven't heard you talk about George Orwell. Is his reputation as great prognosticator and a great writer warranted? Again, a little bit of a swerve from the subject of bodies in the crawl way. <laughs> I like Orwell. In fact, I like him more with time, as time passes. I'm not all that fond of his fiction, but his nonfiction is terrific. Uh, uh, Jay Nichols is responding to Jenny Parks. Uh, a whole bunch of deleted messages. Jenny Parks is saying, we vermin will always stand united. <laughs> do you like, uh, DT says, excuse me, do you like Hitchens' book on Orwell? I consider it more of an essay on Orwell. Uh, I, 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 re I resisted at the time when he was doing it. I resisted the idea that these tiny little pamphlets were books. Uh, but I, I liked it. I think it's fairly obvious, but I liked it. Uh, Matt Sheridan says, Happy Sunday. Monet Doyle says, I'm not a fan of reading about serial killers. I don't I won't want to know about their lives or how they killed people. Well, and you wouldn't want this writing project. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, Brebo1 says, Hopefully Frida lightens your mood after all this serial killer research. Uh, that's absolutely true. I made the mistake in mid morning today. I read, I read, I reread Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle, and then I thought, okay, you're in the you're in the right mental place now to do a little more reading about, in this case, John Wayne Gacy. And I did a little more reading, and I actually felt the need to just go and spend time with Frida. Just go go out into the world, and it was a bright sunny day, and it's raining now, but it was a bright sunny day all day. Go out into the world and just spend non human time to clean yourself, and it did. It did work. Uh, N.B. Hunt says Luca Rocco Magnotta was his name. He was briefly interviewed once by T on TV by Piers Morgan, if I remember rightly. Sheesh, that's two awful humans. Anyway, he was caught because of an internet forum. Oh my. Okay, well I will I will reference that. If he's extremely you know degrade, then I, I might take a while to get to him <laughs> because uh, I'm dealing with the really big ones, the the big marquee serial killers, the the top twenty. Uh, for my sins, I am. Uh, that reading guy says more silly colors today. It doesn't have to be our topic, our only topic. We have a ton of books to show you. Uh, but it is, it, I am definitely involved in it today. So I brought it up on a Steve stream because I am your favorite streamer. And that's what streamers do. They just hang their laundry out to dry. Uh, Balin321, reading about serial killers is like reading about Nazis. You expect the frisson of evil and just get boring, dreadful ghouls. These characters are seldom interesting. Oh boy, you said a mouthful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's boring, dreadful ghouls that just, it's so, it leaves a film on you when you spend a lot of time with it. Especially if the crimes go on for a long time. 
as most of the marquee serial killers, the, it, the crimes go on for a long time. Uh, Street Medic says, Ed Gein, yeah, exactly. He was the subject of a great graphic novel just a couple of years ago uh, that I ranked very highly. I absolutely loved it. Never imagined that I would go back and read about these things, about just the, the, the quiet moments, in his case, the house, and also the the uh, the other quiet, desperate moments, the quiet, cold, panting, totally solitary, desperate moments where, with the light of one shaded lantern, he is digging up dead bodies from a cemetery. Uh, no accomplices, nobody knowing that, nobody seeing that or having any idea that that was true. Uh, uh, Quaint and Curious Volumes. It was interesting to read about a serial killer in Martin Amos's experience. His cousin was a victim and it affected his family profoundly. Yeah, I need to go back to Amos just in general, sooner or later, maybe not this summer. Uh, Quaint and Curious Volumes, again, uh, are your YouTube recommendations are going to be a nightmare. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. I've had this happen to me before, not with serial killers, but every once in a while I need to, to learn about something and I for some reason, maybe because I'm, I'm an old creature of, of the printed word, I go to YouTube last. But when I do, yeah, it screws up my my, my recommendations. Uh, Maximus Stenich. Oh, wait, the chat jumped. Let's go and find you. In the funnest stream on the internet. This is the funnest stream on the internet. Uh, let's go to Maximus. There you are. If you were to sell a biography of James Russell Lowell to Harvest Belt Map Press, would it pay as well as the serial killer business? I doubt it would be as soiling. I would love that. Oh, my God. I actually know someone who got approached by a publisher. Hey, have you got a book? You can write for us. We'll be happy to publish it for you. <laughs> that doesn't happen to normal people. It certainly doesn't happen to me. If somebody from Belt Map Press came to me and said, hey, would you give us a 500-page biography, a general interest biography of James Russell Lowell. I would love that. I would love that. Uh, but I can all, I don't know the, the rates either way. We didn't quite get that far in today's video meeting, but I can almost guarantee that the money wouldn't be as good. But the respectability would be. <laughs> the book would be in bookstores. Uh, the credit would be out there in big, bright letters with my name. Uh, that would be, that'd be amazing. Uh, that'll never happen. But uh, Jay Nicole says, Steve, is the curiosity of serial killers for a writing project? Well, it would be. Yeah, it would be. Not my own writing project. It would become mine, but it, it's not one that I dreamt up. Uh, that reading guy, one thought largely unexplored last stream is that the lack of serial killers mentioned in the ancient world, maybe it was because they saw it as divine wrath. It could be. I think that... I think, well, how, how they perceived it is definitely an avenue towards explaining this. I think it's one, it has to be one of two things. Either for some reason they didn't think culturally to, to mention it, or for some reason culturally it did not happen. And it doesn't look to me like serial killers are a function of culture. Certainly the individuals, once you once they are caught, if they're caught alive and they are interviewed, certainly it seems like they're just wrong. They're just wrong. They're built wrong, which is not a function of culture. Maybe a function of nurture. A lot of them had horrible childhoods, uh, but horrible childhoods aren't exactly endemic to the USA or to the 20th century. Uh, the spaminators here, serial killers are fascinating. That's very unfortunate for many reasons. One of the most disturbing things to me is the people who fall in love with these creatures after capture. Oh, and also, wow. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. Some of them do. They, they have their groupies. That is just amazing to me. Uh, fortunately, that would fall well outside the, the, the ambit of any of this potential project. Uh, Balin321, the Pied Piper of Hamelin might be an example of a historical serial killer. Yeah, what does that represent? Right, there's Lizard's Bathory, there's the Pied Piper, there are a couple of other figures. But, but I mean, it, the United States currently has anywhere between 30 and 50 active serial killers. And this is at a time when everyone is cautious about serial killers and when there's tons of forensic detection. Still, if that were true, if, if that proportion were anywhere near true, and that proportion is low in, in the interstate era, in the post-war 20th century, that number was five times as high. If those percentages hold true across cultures, then they would have been true in Pericles and Athens. Um, but anyway, uh, Monet Doyle, the weather is quite nice in Georgia. My family and I went to the varsity in Atlanta. And the weather was fine here for most of the day and then just became uh, drippy and wet. Uh, but this is it. The, 
Storms that were predicted later in the week are not going to happen. It's, we've got smooth sailing with no other weather uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, Ami is here. Good Nord. Ami1649, who refuses to have me back on his show to discuss this, that, and the other. Uh, Soft White Underbelly, one of my favorite YouTube channels, has an interview with a John Wayne Gacy survivor. A great and harrowing interview. Uh, didn't John Wayne Gacy have only one survivor? Soft White Underbelly. I'm going to have to... I, I get them a little bit mixed up at the moment. Not the YouTube channels, but the serial killers. Uh, I'm going to have to look look into that. I thought John Wayne Gacy had only one survivor. Uh, a boy who fought back. But but I'll, I'll have to check out this channel. Uh, Fee says, I agree with a few posters here. I'm not interested in reading about serial killers. It's a niche subject. Yes, it's a niche subject. Although, for a time, in the late 90s and, and the aughts, you could easily sell a book in America on that subject. On that niche subject, you could de definitely for a time, I, maybe that time has passed, but definitely for a time, it might have been a niche subject, but it was me, it was reaching a huge audience, not a niche audience. Uh, the Spaminator says, and on the subject of Killer Clowns, Killer Clowns from Outer Space is one of the greatest films of all time, planting my flag. We, <laughs> key. Uh, that reading guy, we had a good streak of Steve Streams without the Spaminator, but clearly our luck has ended. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Vivian says 93. No idea what that means. Oh, Jasper clarifies 93 people watching. Okay, that's great. Uh, maybe, would the, does the number go up on the weekend, or does the number go up by how often I do this? I don't know. Uh, Jasper says, watched Ladyhawk this morning. So fun. Love Leo McCurd. Made me think of Rumpel, of course. So was this your first time? Did you watch Ladyhawk because of uh, Grammaticus Books and I? We, we, uh, we uh, the fantasy, best fantasy movies, it came up a couple of times. Uh, that would be wonderful if you watched it for the first time. I was almost tempted to watch it myself, to rewatch it. It's been years since I watched it. Uh, but it's not Boy Kills World. Nobody punches anybody's brains through their eyes. So, <laughs> so there's no interest to me. Uh, that reading guy says, Steve, how many Stephen King books have you reviewed? Probably only four or five in 50 years and 500 piles of crap. Uh, Street Medic says, speaking of books, I'm reading Life and Energy by Isaac Asimov because I haven't read any science fact books in a while, even though it's 60 years old, it holds up quite well. Yes, Asimov's nonfiction holds up really well. If I didn't hate the size of it, I would go looking for uh, his Asimov's Guide to Shakespeare. It's a, it's a, you know, a Manhattan phone book, so I don't, I don't want that hardcover. I would never use it. But his, yeah, he was a passionate reader and also a passionate explainer. I think his penchant for being a passionate explainer is what detracts from his fiction because he can't control himself in his fiction and that's not your job as a novelist to explain things uh, your job is to dramatize things and I, that's always second place to him but in in his nonfiction contracts he got to just let that go he just get, just go at that but are we are we talking about books we're reading because <laughs> i've got a bunch of examples here one of them in fact is science fiction i went from uh the best of cl moore to this thing the best of edmund hamilton uh, again, in one of these uh, book club editions or whatever they are, these old the Ballantine hardcovers before they did the the very distinctive looking paperbacks, they did them all in hardcovers. Uh, and I've been I've been reading through this. So there, I got a book in that wasn't about serial killers. Uh, Ami is back. I love you, Steve. Well, you know, it's a funny way of showing it. You were supposed to be over here. You were supposed to have visited a year ago. And also, I could be on your show. I love being on your show. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, Spaminator, been busy, that reading guy. Been, but so happy everyone gets the privilege of my sodium-laden presence. DT Temple 54 says, is the Anthony B or book on the Russian Revolution a beaver? You must mean beaver. Worth the read, yes. Anthony Beaver is always worth the read. Uh, NP Hunt, oh God, Steve, you're going to have a good time with the smiley face killers conspiracy. That was a great suggestion. You'll find it fascinating. Uh, and Jasper says, the smiley face killer is a theorized killer of young men. Lots of young men are recently found drowned in river, near rivers, but lots have been heavily sedated. Very interesting conspiracy. So this is an open case. The smiley face killer. I'm obviously going to have to deep, deep dive into this, but this is an open case. This is, no one has ever been, the smiley face killer has not been found. And uh, N.P. Hunt is using the plural. Are we, is the thinking on the smiley face that there's more than one person involved, more than one person doing the crime? And if so, what's the reason for that? 
there must be forensic reason for that. Uh, uh, DT, Steve, what's your advice for reading Carlisle's French Revolution for a first-time lay reader? I tried starting it again a few days ago, but after 40 pages, I'm constantly looking up obscure Frenchmen he's talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that might, that might, uh, that might deter. He was writing for a far more, uh, a far more informed audience, an audience that had already, already knew what was going on, knew the names and the people and the bit players. Here, I might point out, is a perfect example of the, adv the advantage of ebooks, just long press on any name. You don't have to put a, your, your finger in the book and go looking for something else. But if you're reading a print book, yeah, that might be, I would say my advice would be, you, that's not going to stop happening. So my advice would be to concentrate on the drama and just let the names wash over you and hope that they stick. Uh, Kevin J.N., not a serial killer, but I'm sure Cato is relieved O.J. Simpson is dead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm getting a, a, a few emails about O.J. Simpson after I made a comment, I think on a Steve stream, about how it was absolutely no surprise to the LAPD that he was that he murdered his wife. That was, that was no surprise to them at all. I mean, a whole bunch of people, including, I think, a few O.J. fans, didn't know there were any O.J. fans left in the world, saying, no, you don't know that. You don't even know that he was the killer. Uh, uh, Balin321, serial killers do feel like a particularly U.S. phenomenon. Only examples in the low countries I can think of is Dutrox, Dutro and the Brabant killers. Certainly not hundreds like in the U.S. Okay, I don't know either of those examples that you're mentioning from the low countries, but this phenomenon definitely happens in the U.K. Definitely. <laughs> I can say that beyond a shadow of a doubt. There are, I don't know about hundreds, but there are dozens and dozens of UK serial killers, including a lot of them at the seacoast. Uh, uh, Scott Jones, best biography of Alexander the Great, in your opinion, reading Everett and enjoying it, but is there a different must read? I wouldn't call Everett a must read. Uh, I would I would go with Robin Lane Fox, for instance, as an earlier one. And, of course, I have a huge sweet spot for Mary Reynolds, The Nature of Alexander. Uh, but also uh, David Green. Uh, there, there, are, there are older Alexander books that are better than Everett. So if you're enjoying that, you've got a lot of great readings in store for you. Story, reading you're going to really enjoy. Uh, uh, the Mild Rumpus. Hello, hello. We're still talking about serial killers. Well, we don't only have to talk about serial killers. Oh. Uh, uh, Fee says Belfast, born and bred. Oh my, okay. Uh, Jasper says after last night's morbid stream and perhaps the news, I started reading Doctor Thorne. So comforting, yes. Doctor Thorne is very comforting, although it has a murder in it. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a hilarious murder, a hilarious, uh, hilarious trollop scene with the the, the seedy ne'er do well brother who sees sees his killer coming, thinks nothing of it, says, "What's in the wind?" <laughs> Gets his head blown off. <laughs> but uh, but. Yeah, la last night, fortunately, the news that was breaking, that was developing while we were Steve streaming last night, fortunately, today, we get to take a little bit of a breath. It, 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 today, at least tentatively, it looks like the worst might not happen. That the so-called, to use the, use the overused phrase, that cooler heads may prevail. It, it's looking maybe like that's true. That would be great. But Dr. Thorne is awful comforting. That's awful tempting, too. I haven't done a trollop read-along. I'm not allowed to do any read-alongs, though, read-alouds on my channel until I finish the New Testament, which I just somehow don't do. Uh, I need to do that before I go on. But Dr. Thorne is a really good candidate. Uh, Gandhi Angle says, greetings all. Balin321 says, which characters like Gacy do you support? With characters like Gacy, do you support the death penalty morally? Well, you don't know my thoughts on the death penalty, do you? <laughs> Are you implying that you do? You're in you're in a horrible position either way when it comes to to this channel because you can either look at me and listen on the surface to some of the things I say and say ah standard Massachusetts liberal ultra liberal, or you could you could listen a little deeper and hear something that isn't that at all. <laughs> uh, I, in the narrow answer to your to your question, uh. I totally support the state executing John Wayne Gacy. Totally support that. Uh, Andrew Salisbury says, I always found that Ted Bundy was the creepiest. Really? Hey, he's he's on the carousel. I did a brief overview of him. I'm, I'm, I do a brief overview of these sorts of things, and then uh, the next round of the carousel is a little deeper, and then the next one will be even deeper than that. Where are you going, baby? Oh, what you doing? Huh? 
Oh, there's your hated your hated enemy is outside. The rain is outside. Are you gonna are you gonna make a little bed for yourself? Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Uh, and Bundy, of course, comes up in any discussion of serial killers. He is he's in the he's in that the aforementioned top twenty. Definitely, he's probably in the top five. But I have yet I have yet to access. I'm sure you're right, but I have yet to access the creepy element, aside from the serial killing part, but you know what I mean. They they all have a certain, the word was frisson, the term frisson was used earlier. They all have that, and I haven't got that yet with him. Uh, but I will. I'm sure that I will get there. Uh, Jay Nicole, what to do with the body, what to do with the serial killer, how does society deal with this? Right, well, how society deals with them is, is a separate subject, but practically speaking, Luring someone, finding enough privacy to kill them, those things are, I hate to say it, even in the 20th century, comparatively easy. It's what you do with the huge amount of stuff that's left over. Where, like for instance, in the, in the 21st century, you could, I don't imagine that you could do this in urban centers, and yet, as far as I know, I think four uh, currently active serial killers, uncaught, undiagnosed serial killers, are working in urban areas. So. Anyway, anyway, uh, Stephanie Patterson says you can't go wrong with Trollope. That's absolutely true. Uh, Toll Story 111, do you like E.T.A. Hoffman? The genre people on BookTube seem to ignore him. Yeah, I don't I don't particularly like him myself. Uh, J, Kevin J.N. says, Steve, have you ever... Oh, where did you go? The chat jumped again. Here, let's go back to Kevin J.N. That's where we were. We were at uh, Kevin J.N. Problem is, people are leaving multiple comments. Oh my God, there's a lot of comments to get through. Well, we'll do that. We're on the comments now, so we'll do that. Uh, let's just go back to where you were. Uh, there we go. Have you ever listened to the segment on the Howard Stern show when a serial killer called in? Very creepy. Did that really happen? Good Lord. No, I have not. Uh, Gandhi Angles is responding to Kevin J. N. Uh, uh, saying that it was very creepy. So you heard this. Especially the fact that he was so matter of fact. Yeah, they're all matter of fact. When they end up talking, when they end up caught and confessing, they're all incredibly matter of fact. Uh, Scott Jones responding to Tolstoy 111. Just read Tomcat Murr. Lots of fun. Trish Bovel saying, I recently watched 22 Rillington Place about John Christie. I wasn't familiar with the story. Movie is fantastic with Richard Attenborough and John Hurt. I haven't seen the movie. Uh, Vivian says, Ed did keep himself busy with crafts. Sorry. I know too much about some subjects. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know that you would call those crafts. Oh, uh, Balin three two one. It is also so frustrating reading about serial killers. It is shocking how often law enforcement gets close or even cover up. Reading about uh, Ma Mark, is it Dutro? Uh, was so frustrating. I I don't know the specifics of his case, but I know exactly what you mean. Oh my God, case after case after case where law enforcement has everything they need and they just don't use it. They just ignore it. I, I mean, the uh, the obvious modern example, modern relatively modern example that everybody thinks about is Jeffrey Dahmer, where victims were, were naked with handcuffs on, yelling at the police to please help them and were you now... You just if you're just gay trade, we don't need to pay attention to this. But there in almost every other case. In almost every other case, it, the law enforcement just doesn't seem up to the job. Or, as you as you indicate here, actively negligent. Uh, street medic, it's scary knowing what's out there that you will never know about. Yeah, the, the barest tips of the iceberg that you see. That's why I mentioned last night, I, I brought up la in last night's discussion, whether or not anybody ever gives you the creeps for no reason that you can think of. So, and and in, a, in a place where you wouldn't think of it. So I'm not talking about you're walking in, a, in you know, diverted, a deserted walkway and someone else is there and they're walking either towards you or right behind you. I'm not talking about a situation like that. I'm talking about a situation where you don't expect your hackles to go up and they do. Uh, uh, but let's see here. Uh, David Adams, wait a minute. I feel tricked. This isn't direct from Coachella, more like direct from Couch. <laughs> It isn't direct from Coachella. No, it's true. A lot of the pretty boys that are there, a huge crowds of them, they all go to Coachella. So they say it's to relax, but they're, it, that much cocaine is not relaxing. <laughs> so I don't know why they're, uh, they say that. 
Uh, Nick Piccarelli says, will Serial Killer Watch replace Bro Watch? I hope those two things aren't the same. <laughs> I hope they don't ever turn out to be the same. But no, no, it won't. I, will, I doubt I will ever do a video on Serial Killers. Unless I get a book on the subject. I doubt that I ever will. Uh, uh, let's see here. Tolstoy 111 is responding to Scott Jones. Uh, and DT, DT says, Colin Wilson wrote a book about serial killer psychology. Is it insightful or any good? I know that he wrote it, and he's usually very good, but I don't think I ever read it. I certainly don't have a copy. That's on my, on my list of things to do. Uh, uh, DT says, did Colin Wilson ever write anything worth reading? Extremely prolific. Is he from the Steve School of Writing? I don't know what the Steve School of Writing is. That's fairly interesting, but I love him. I think he's great. Uh, N.P. Hunt says, Bundy is the perfect example of the arrogance which comes with sheer psychopathy. Bundy being consulted by the FDI to help catch the Green River Killer was one of the inspirations for the Lecter books. Yeah, you see echoes of all of these things. Uh, God knows how much research on the, how much reading on the subject Thomas Harris did before he wrote even Red Dragon. Uh, uh, Scott Jones is responding to Soul Story 111. Jasper says, there is a video by a classicist on YouTube about ancient serial killers but he seems to think that that hitmen for the state are serial killers. Yeah, and I would I would rule that out. I would say they're not. People who kill a lot of people, like a Central Park shooter or a school shooter or something like that, they are not serial killers. And anyone acting under the penumbra of the state, even distantly as mercenaries, are not serial killers. I'm talking about someone ordinary. I'm talking about the suburbs. I'm talking about bodies in the crawlway. I'm talking about something like that. Which I, I'm going to need, obviously, if I get into the subject, I'm going to need to define these terms. Uh, but I think we know what, what we mean and what we don't mean. Uh, Vivian says, there are a bunch of people who collect serial killer mem memorabilia. Oh, is that so? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I wonder if that's the reason, one of the reasons why law enforcement tends to destroy their homes once they're caught and incarcerated. Uh uh, quaint and curious as long as, wait a minute, you're not going to be Bill O'Reilly's new ghostwriter, are you? <laughs> Killing 30 nursing students, the Ted Bundy story? No. No. Like I said, I don't have to take any job. <laughs> and Jenny Park says, she beats me to it. Jenny, Steve, ghostwriter? He would never. <laughs> you beat me to it. I shouldn't announce these things on my channel. Oh, uh, Balin321, uh, Giles DeRay might be worth a mention too. I don't know that name, but yeah, personally, I think it was more a lack of opportunity. Atomization didn't really exist. There also wasn't a sensational press that might inspire. Uh, JLK says the algorithm suggested me an interview with Ed Kemper the other day. It was fascinating and disturbing. I was struck by how articulate and casual he was in discussing his life and crimes. One aspect of this that I have not delved into yet are the interviews. There are plenty of interviews, and I have not done that. I have not looked at it. Uh, I think because I, I, I think I know myself well enough to know that I'd find that even more disturbing than just accounts of the crimes. Uh, the Mild Rumpus, Soft White Underbelly is a fascinating channel. All right, two votes for this. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to find it. Uh, View from the Bars here. You, your mention of interstate highways reminds me of that goose pimplesome climax in Silence of the Lambs where Hector gives the goods. Don't these murders look desperately random? Right. Well, I read, I read a, a book on the subject, Killer on the Road, that was just reissued. I had my issues with a lot of the stuff that the writer of that book contended. But I, in other words, I think it was an interesting but a flawed study of what effect of any interstate highways might have on serial killing. I... I still have my issues with it. It, it. One one thing that I I'm looking for common threads in all of these the these big twenty this, the carousel that I'm looking at now. One of the common threads that I see is very much locality. These are trapdoor spiders. If the highways are playing a role, they're playing a role in people uh, fleeing from one nodule of killing to another nodule of killing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I need to, I'll need to figure this all out. Uh, N.P. Hunt says, yeah, I met a guy once who owned a table made by one of the killers of, of James Bulger. His parents made him burn it because she thought it was horrible and creepy that he ever, that he ever bought it. I don't understand the, uh, 
the memorabilia people. That uh, That is an aspect of this that I don't really want to get into. Uh, Jenny Parks wants to know who Giles DeRay was. Was he the werewolf guy in France? Uh, the name's not ringing a bell with me. Kevin JN says, this is a fascinating subject. Will you be interviewing FBI profiles? A little bit leery about that. <laughs> a little bit leery about how, how high a profile. I will not be interviewing anybody. No. Uh, because I will be only assisting in this project. I will not be writing a book on the subject. So I won't be interviewing anybody, but I'm also... I don't know how authors do this. I mean, uh, how they how they avoid having all sorts of tendrils of suspicion start to wave in their direction because they're researching. I, I had a, a problem with that a few years ago for NaNoWriMo, <laughs> for Pete's sake. So I don't, I don't, I will not be interviewing anybody. No. Uh, Street Medic says, what does it say about us that we find Steeler Colors fascinating? Well, I think that part of it, that part of it is fairly uh, understandable, right? It's not you you obey the rules so the element of transgression there is always going to make something like this fascinating whether it's serial killing or anything else uh, uh the the people who take it further than that the people who admire and i have seen some already i have seen some and also the people who you know stock the locations and buy the memorabilia that's different but that ordinary people would find this fascinating i don't find that very confusing uh Jasper says, I did watch Lady Hawk for the first time because of your list. Rewatched the video and it almost made me rewatch Ravenous for the 100th time. <laughs> I could see that. I can't at the moment see that because all I care about is Boy Kills World. But when I'm free from that, I will certainly, I will certainly watch Ravenous for the 100th time. Uh, Gandhi Angle says, what do you think of Alvin Toffler's Future Shock? I recall it made quite a splash when it first came out. Yeah, it made quite a splash. I didn't think much of it at the time. I thought you don't know what you're talking about. And I still think that. Uh, DT says, soft white underbelly is an incredibly draining channel. So many tragic lives trapped in a vicious circle. So many of his interview subjects pass, and it's just sad when he posts a follow-up. You mean die? Is that what you mean by pass? You're not saying they're, they're trying to be you know, a technician when they're actually a gardener. You mean they, when his subjects die. Uh, so he does follow-ups after his subjects have died. That is that would be kind of draining. Uh, Toy Story 111. All, Asimov also did terrific annotated editions of Paradise Lost, Gulliver's Travels, Byron's Don Juan. I once saw at the Brattle his Gulliver's Travels. That turns up. I never see the Paradise Lost one. I would love it, but I never see it. Uh, and that I would get because it, no matter how big it is, because that that you know has to work. And two, uh, Balin three two one says there are dozens of videos with the interrogation of mass murderers. They always look so pathetic. Alec Minassian explaining to the confused interrogator what an incel was just pure cringe alec manassian do i know that name that's ringing a bell uh trish bovel says this afternoon i read about half of the familiar by lee bardugo my sympathies uh jenny park says how is it trish i quite enjoyed some of her other books uh the mild rumpus says just got back from seeing a new off-broadway musical called dead outlaw based on the bizarre true story of Elmer McCurdy and the life his corpse took on. You go to off-Broadway productions? Are you talking literally off-Broadway, or are you in St. Louis? Oh, I used to love going to off-Broadway productions. I went to so many of them. Uh, the Mild Rumpus continues. It will be released through Audible soon, hoping find, uh, to find books about the subject. Randy Ray is here. Hey, everybody. Hey, Steve. The Spaminator. I'm about to sit down and try to knock out a chunk of Les Mis. I feel I'm never going to get through this thing uh, if I give it like three hours at a time. Uh, yes. In, uh, I'm assuming you're doing this for Classics and Company. Uh, for those of you maybe maybe not, maybe don't know, Classics and Company is a wonderful booktube collective. <laughs> and... and goes go i'm one of the hosts we go at classics at a, a slightly more leisurely rate 90 days instead of 30 days not a month and the one we're doing right now is les mis i am doing chunks of les mis at a time and i have a million thoughts on the subject and i don't know where to express them or how to express them i have a million thoughts especially on the art of translation uh because i'm 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 encountering this book in a way I have not in years and years and years. And that is making a huge difference. Uh, Trish Bovel is responding to Jenny. Jenny is responding to Randy. Mystery and Mayhem says, just dropped in to say hi. Hope everyone is doing well. Gandhi Angle says, which biography of Patricia Highsmith do you recommend? Uh, 
uh, probably the, the recent one, the one that came right before the letters collection, the one that I reviewed. I, I remember thinking it was it was better than the, the two, uh, the one other one that I read. Uh, but I don't remember the name of the author off the top of my head. Uh, Street Medic, I once read that Asimov is represented in every category in the Dewey Decimal System. Don't know if it's true or not, but if you want to learn science painlessly, he's your man. That's absolutely true. And I bet I would believe the claim about him being in every category of the Dewey Decimal System. Uh, uh, Tolstoy 111 says, I was thinking of why the term airport novel is derogatory. Is it because if you only buy a book before flying, it implies you don't read otherwise? It, that's one of the things that it implies. It also implies uh, that you're not a demanding reader because it, it assume it, it 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 implies that you're buying the book to distract you from the screaming kid or the cramped seat or the bad food or the nervousness of flying. That you're not. It implies that you're not buying it to read, and that therefore you don't care how good it is. Uh, that, that definitely, but also what you imply that that you, you know you're going through the airport and you see a book and you know you've got a. a a sit down stay in front of you in the era before every seat back had movie screens. I don't imagine airport novels exist anymore. Uh, uh, Vivian says, Frida looks so sweet. Yes, she's, she's now right next to me. She's decided to go to sleep, to curl up and go to sleep for a bit. Uh, Geo Craftsman says, Why ignore the greatest serial killers of all vengeful prehistoric megalodon sharks? <laughs> oh, I wish. I wish that were this project and there were money in the wind. There's there's money dangling over the table here. Uh, Scott Jones, I took those names down. Thanks for the Alexander Rex. A mirror and all, might, you might raise an eyebrow. It is a very impressionistic book, very novelistic. I love it. I don't think there's anything wrong with its scholarship. But, but Peter Green or, uh, uh, well, and also the 19th century had some great military biographies of Alexander that I... I'm sure that they exist. On, like, for instance, if you're okay with e-reading, you could go to Project Gutenberg, just type in Alexander the Great. I'm sure that some of them have come, would come up. And they're all really good. Uh, Mystery and Mayhem. Hi, Mild Rumpus. I love your video about the Antiquarian Book Fair. Great job on it. Randy Ray says, Steve, is it too soon to start teasing our plans for Book Trek? Are we going to do our, our horrifying plan? Are we really going to do that? I, I am more tempted the more I think about it. Uh, but I don't think I don't how many people even know what book track is. Uh, Jasper says Steve wants executions for everybody. <laughs> Street medic philosophically, I can't justify the death penalty, but if you've seen some of the stuff I've seen in my career, you wouldn't shed a tear over any of these monsters. Okay. All right. We don't we certainly don't have to move from serial killers to the death penalty. What a fun stream this is. <laughs> but but there is a contract involved here, right? We're not all just on our own. We live in a society. We live in the in a contract. We agree to the rules of that contract. We certainly agree to those rules when they are all to our benefit. And there are a lot of those rules. You see them every day. They're all around you. You couldn't do your job if we didn't all agree to the contract of how roads work, for instance. And you might say, well, it's not a contract because it's enforceable by law, but so is murder. We, we, there is a social web. There is a, a, a deep, inchoate understanding of what it means to live in large groups together. These unwritten, unspoken laws existed long before there were written laws and long before there were walls and long before there were cities. I don't think that's deniable. And that implies a collective identity. No matter how much we're all individuals, it implies a collective identity. A collective identity that can bestow all sorts of bounties. All of us live easier lives because we live with each other. We live easier lives than they would be if we lived alone or in small groups. And philosophically, if you agree with that, it's not much of an extension to say that that collective identity can also punish uh, and and also clean itself. That if, that if you've got a, you've got tons and tons of individuals living in a city or in, or in a town, sure, but together they also form something. Together they form a living organism, and that living organism, when it notices that it has a rogue cell, might want to get rid of that rogue cell and be justified in doing so. 
I, it's a fascinating subject. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, Duncan McCardle. Oh, the chat has jumped. Let's go find Duncan. I'm glad I le- that I read out these names ahead of time because otherwise I would never remember. Uh, let's go find Duncan. What was he saying? He's responding to the mild rumpus. Ugh. So I didn't even need to find it. Uh, Jasper says, do you think serial killers are more interesting when caught or not? I find them infinitely more interesting when nobody knows. I think it gives a little distance from reality for me. I think, wouldn't that make it more disturbing? <laughs> to, I mean, there are active serial killers in the American uh, Southwest and Midwest right now. And I think one in Texas. Wouldn't that make it more disturbing that you don't know who, that you don't know anything about them? Uh, Balin321, you are likely to be treated to an angry rant. Many conspiracies abound. Largest mass demonstration in Belgium history was against the police in this case. I will look it up. I'm going to want to know these things. Uh, Vivian says up to 116 here. Was that viewers? You don't mean temperature. Oh my God. I practically salivate when you mention that because that would be beautiful temperature. <laughs> but uh, uh, Richard Reed says I'm trying to lure Steve to Vermont. <laughs> Oh my. Uh, Jay Nicole, there is a grim sleeper. He was recently caught. There might be more info on him with updated forensic. Wasn't wasn't one of the top 20 serial killers born in Vermont? Wasn't Ted Bundy born in Vermont? I almost want to say that. I'm getting the, their details mixed up. The more I learn them, the better I will be at that. Uh, Jenny Park says, are you going to finally find out how many bodies Steve has stashed at the Odeon? <laughs> <laughs> the old Odeon in Leeds. <laughs> there were there were bodies, but they weren't dead, baby. <laughs> uh, Scurry Girl says, oh, like on the blue line. Uh, okay, I don't know what that's in reference to. Jasper says, is any amount of cocaine relaxing? I can't imagine it ever gets less intense. No, I'd imagine not. I'd imagine not. I wanted to experience these things. Years and years and years ago, I'd heard about them. I'd read about them. I knew all sorts of people lost their lives to them. Uh, so I wanted to know about heroin and cocaine. And I knew I knew that I wasn't going to be addicted to them. So I wanted to try both of them. And I, I, I the, the standard line that I used afterwards is, I, I don't know why anyone would ever stop using heroin. And I don't know why anyone would ever continue using cocaine. Cocaine is a purely unpleasant experience from start to finish. So I agree. I don't think that the more of it ever gets less intense. I don't I don't want to think about the damage that's being done to all of these himbos at Coachella. They damage themselves enough in the normal course of things. Uh, Andrew Salisbury says, in regard to Bundy, he would wear a cast and feign injuries to solicit help from young females who inevitably became his victims. Yes. And uh, Thomas Harris, of course, grabbed that detail for Silence of the Lambs. Uh, along with uh, a, a couple of other details from a couple of other uh, of the top 20. Uh, Street Medic, I think Frida would probably dig up any bodies Steve has buried. Frida's not a digger. I don't have any bodies buried. <laughs> but she, this, it involves too much stooping. <laughs> but Frida is not a digger. She, she not, doesn't have any of the annoying habits that other dogs have. Uh, uh, she probably helped, says Jenny Parks. Uh, she, she loves people. On our walks today when it was sunny, Oh my God, she was in he- she was in heaven, just greeting people and, and forcing them, forcing them to pet her, just catting all over their shins so they bend down and pet her. Uh, Tolstoy one eleven says, "Do you like Pullman's His Dark Materials?" I do very much. Balin three two one says, "Has anybody ever given you that intense ick feeling? Did it turn out to be correct?" You know, I've been searching my memory for that very thing. And I have to say, I know that a couple of times it's come up in the stream that serial killers are basically an American thing, but I never felt it in America, but I felt it overseas. I felt it in a couple of places. I remember I, one one of the times that I felt it was absolutely unmistakable. It was because, because it was happening in an environment, in a place that it absolutely shouldn't have been. It was, I was in, I've been in plenty of creepy places with other humans, where other humans turned up, including on the Appalachian Trail. But the one time that's always stuck the most in my memory was an incident where it was the last thing I was expecting. And suddenly it was it hit me like a two by four. It was just incredibly strong. Uh, I, I have a little bit of an unfair advantage usually when it comes to this sort of thing when I traveled because I had dogs with me. And psychopaths have a noticeable reaction to dogs. Like we've mentioned, they train themselves to be charming or in unobtrusive with other humans. They usually don't extend that training to dogs usually not 
and most of them killed dogs before they killed humans. And that might have been what did it. Uh, uh, but I never stuck around long enough to know if, if it was real. Uh, Gandhi Angle says, I worked with an individual who said he liked to get up early and shoot coyotes. He smiled when he shared that they never saw it coming. It was very disturbing. Yeah, yeah. Well, part of that is the psychopathy of gun culture, so-called gun culture. I know, I've known people who lived in the American West who their idea of a fun afternoon was to, was to go out wanting to kill anything they saw that wasn't their own game, that wasn't their own livestock. So you know, I'm going to go out, if I see anything that isn't my own livestock, I'm just going to shoot it. I don't care if it's a danger to my livestock or not, I'm just going to kill it. Uh, D- Dylan Mathias, hi Steve, the other day you mentioned the plays of Sean O'Casey. Where should one start with him? He's been on my list for a while, and you gave me the kick in the butt I needed. Well, as with anything, I would say with the plays, try and find a version on YouTube or go to one live. I wouldn't, I wouldn't with any play, I wouldn't suggest reading it first. Uh, I'd suggest seeing it first. But if you're going to start with him and you're going to read, you know, you'll easily have uh, access, for instance, to Juno and the Paycock. Just read that. That'll give you an idea. That's his style at its peak. You'll, that'll give you an idea whether or not you like his style. And if you do, well, then you can go to the less realized plays. They're all, they're all really good. Uh, Jenny Park says, I've been trying to read the third one for over a year. Tolstoy, I know it's going to hurt. Okay, I don't, uh, I don't know what that's about. Uh, Mike Jr., what's your favorite biography on Winston Churchill? My favorite one of all time is a book called The Literary Churchill, which is a pointed biography. It's a book about him as a writer. Didn't think I would enjoy it, and I did. I really, really did. Uh, but the multi-volume biographies, I, I'm, I'm afraid I cannot recommend Andy Roberts' book on, on Churchill. I just cannot do it. Uh, even though it's incredibly readable, you will not put it down. A thousand pages or not. But the multi-volume ones, uh, the William Manchester books, for instance, they are great. They are just great. Uh, Jasper says, one very upsetting and disturbing thing about Edmund Kemper is just how likable he seems, even in prison. Yeah, yeah, that becomes uh, a real strong element. I think you even get little bits of that in the long interview that John Wayne Gacy gave in prison. Uh, you, your guard is up the whole time. You know what this thing is, but you can't help yourself sometimes thinking, oh, he sounds like a normal guy. Uh, Balin321, Giles DeRay was an inspiration for Bluebeard, French knight that killed hundreds of children. Okay. All right, uh, I, I'm sure that I've come across that. I'm sure that it's mentioned in Will Durant, among other things. Uh, I'll, I don't know that I'm going to need to look into historical serial killers. I think the 20th century ought to be enough. Uh, the street medic, Bonnie and Clyde, were shot not far from where I grew up in Louisiana. And a lot of sketchy people regularly show up there to pay homage to them. It's sickening. Oh, that is. That's gross. Does that happen a lot? Does Ted Bundy have stalkers now, for instance? I wonder, and I don't want to know. <laughs> Jenny Park says, I watched an interview stating that women have a habit of ignoring red flags in men out of fear of triggering a bad reaction. Well, yes. <laughs> yes, that was, uh, a way too much of that came up during the fever pitch of hashtag me too. But I imagine that, yeah, that that is a case. I, actually, I don't understand. In a lot of cases, I know it's very flippant to say, but in a lot of cases, I don't understand why women date men at all. <laughs> it's just... It's such a minefield. I, you can never be too careful, and you can never know. You can never know for sure. God, no wonder women stick with the good ones they find. God, just uh, uh, Tim's too many books says the Sean O'Casey plays that I've re- enjoyed most rewatching. Do you know the Paycock and the Plow and the Stars? Yeah. Uh, Jasper says the interstate highway doesn't shift the responsibility away from the victims. That urge still exists even without it. Eisenhower isn't some great vicarious killer. No, as much as I like that. No, he's not. No, I'm no one's, I'm not blaming the interstate highway system. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what role it plays. The the main book that I wrote, that I read and reviewed on the subject, said that it did play a huge role. That it suddenly gave serial killers the ability to roam a field for new victims. And I don't see that in the serial killer killer literature. I, maybe I need to read more of that literature. Certainly the Excuse me. Certainly, the interstate highway system seems to play a much more important role in open serial killers now than in, for instance, uh, the 60s and 70s, when those roads were new and were now known. When it was, this was a new feature that was added to American life. But all of a sudden, there were super highways that could take you anywhere. I, I don't see it then. I might see it now. 
but I don't know. Uh, uh, Gandhi Angle says, I find soft white underbelly exploitative. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know this channel. That is very interesting. Uh, DT says, have you uh, watched the Netflix Mindhunter dramatized series about real serial killers? I know about it, but I've been, I've been initially sticking to the written word. I know that I need to stop doing that because I imagine that the most advanced stuff that's been done has been done on video rather than the, the printed word. So and no, I, I'm not familiar with it at all, but I need to, I need to definitely. And you know, notice I might, I want to point out here. I know I'm speaking to the choir unless we get a rando Calrissian. We haven't had one yet, but I might point out here. Notice what you're seeing here, fam, guys, 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 notice what you're seeing here. I'm learning from a lot. I'm not posturing. I'm not saying, oh, I knew. I know all about this. I, or if you disagree with me, that you must be, you know, the spawn of Satan or whatever. Notice this, what's going on in this stream? What have we been at this for an hour? This, all normal. This is what, I have opinions, but I also learn. This is what people who come here for Wine and Calzone's experience. They, this is what the people who know me on Voxer or on email. This is what they experience. This is not the stupid character that every the caricature that every once in a while comes up from some rando character who's saying, "Oh, who's this guy? He's so full of himself, isn't he?" I, I know, I know what you're going to say that I shouldn't let the few random ra negative comments bug me, but they do, especially when they do that. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, Richard Marie says Sasquatch is a serial killer. Sasquatch is peaceful as day is long, unless they kill deer and twist their heads off. <laughs> uh, Matt Sheridan votes for Mindhunter, says it's brilliant. Uh, too bad Netflix canceled it. Uh, Jenny Park says, every time people mention Mindhunter, I keep thinking of the film from 2004. Balin321 says, Alec Minassian was the incel Toronto truck attacker. Okay. Uh, well, that's not, that's not ringing a bell. Uh, Andrew Salisbury says, is Ed Kemper on your carousel? He actually wasn't before this Steve stream, but I, he keeps coming up. He came up last night. He's coming up tonight. So he probably should be, uh, uh, what the, the, the carousel started off with one particular thing, which I think if I do this, if I can hold my nose, if I can close my eyes and think of England, if I can actually just take the money, there's going to be about one particular thing. It, 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 it that's sort of, certainly going to be the central kernel. I don't think there's a book there. I don't think there's uh, even a pitch there. Uh, because it's, it's a closed case. It's a done case. I think you're going to have to do more than that in order to make it sellable. But uh, apparently the people involved don't think that. Uh, but it, no, Ed Kemper needs to be in my carousel. I can add a few, I suppose. Uh, Shell Holsenbake says, Hi, Steve, from a damp Sequoia National Forest. Really? You're getting rain? Uh, there are a couple of little storms. No big thing yet. No big thing on the blob watch. Uh, Tolstoy 111, Asimov's Paradise Lost is long out of print. Used copies over hundreds on Amazon. I found what the library photographed all the pages. Wow, well, that'd be one way to do it, but it'll turn up at the Brattle. The Brattle will provide. I will see it. Uh, Matt Sheridan says, Israel Keys is a scary killer. He's what nightmares are made of. Street Medic says, one of my favorite obscure quotes is from Les Miserables. When I get frustrated, I say I feel like uh, Gymnasterus haranguing the tree. I don't know who Gymnasterus was, but I like the quote. Uh, oh, oh, the chat jumped, and it jumped before I could read out the name. Uh, so am I going to be able to... Well, we can go to Street Medic. We know who that was. Uh, uh, oh my god, there's a lot of people. Oh, here we go. Scott Jones was the next one. Oh yes, uh, for context, I'm interested in Alexander biography because I've purchased the landmark Aryan and I want some overall context for it. They're great. Biographies are great anyway of him. So you, you know, read them all. I say there's a penguin of uh, Quintus Curtius Rufus, I think uh, all by himself that you could read with a great introduction. Uh, Jasper says, Steve was chief legislator for the Mongol empire. Thieves lose their hands. When I was in high school, I had to write an essay defending the Mongol empire's actions. The idea behind all of this would be not to not to get into my own views, but the idea behind all of this would be that individuals exist, but then when individuals ac ac accumulate, when they live together, they form an uber creature, a living society. 
And that living society will act the way other living organisms do. Like, for instance, your body is a gigantic collection of individual cells. They don't know that each other exists, but they do act together when something goes wrong. Uh, but anyway, that reading guy is back. I rejoin the chat and find myself in the middle of a lecture on the social contract where Steve uses terms like philosophically. What world am I in? <laughs> uh, N.P. Hunt, I think you should start a literary feud with Steve Alton by doing your own Megalodon fiction series called Dawn. I wouldn't want a feud with him. He's given my life so much meaning. Uh, the street medic says Rousseau. Bailey 321 says, I have to ask, who do you think Jack the Ripper is? <laughs> There's a difference between having to ask that and having to ask that in every stream. <laughs> I, I have a couple of candidates that I favor. Uh, Michael Lombardo says, Javier Bardem, serial killer in No Country for Old Men. Yikes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Ryan says, Steve stream every night, a gift to the interwebs. I just finished interview with Vampire and was pleasantly surprised. Am I delusional or is Rice writing decent and her storytelling effective? In interviews with the Vampire, it is. Yes, you're not you're not delusional at all. And it gets better in, in the Vampire Lestat. And I think just as good in The Queen of the Damned. Um, but no, you're not at all delusional for seeing that. Uh, Ryan says, but isn't the real tragedy OJ never finding the real killer? <laughs> uh, Jenny Park says, he's never going to tell us, Matt, and the suspense is killing me. Uh, that reading guy says, glad to see a new Steve review has been published on Open Letters since the last stream. Not at all kind of book I was expecting you to review. Yes, you you scolded me. There'll be more book reviews. I'm going to write one tonight, I think, if I don't get uh, dragged off to something else. Uh, JLK says, I'm a nervous flyer flying on an airplane for the first time in over 10 years. I picked up a Bantam classic mass market paperback of Shakespeare and the handsome Othello on the cover to distract me. I don't even know what the new Bantam looks like. Don't even know what that, I don't work in a bookstore anymore. Wow. I don't even know what the new Bantam cover for Othello looks like. Wow. I wonder if the, is, is the cover a copyrighted image from some sort of stage play? Is there an actor on the cover? Uh, but you're nervous and you're flying for the first time in 10 years. Oh my, I'm never going to fly on a plane again. So I can, I sympathize. Uh, Balin321, I feel like the chat sometimes deletes comments if you use certain words. If you're on top on the top chat, you can't see those comments. Uh, well, the chat is certainly, if, it, if it's happening, it's certainly the chat. It's not me. I hope you all know that. I would not delete a comment. Uh, Balin321, how could you resist heroin? I've met so many people who claim they wouldn't get addicted, get addicted. Well, this is, not a, this is not a commercial. It's not an ad at all. I only tried it just to see what it was like. But uh, with heroin, it's like you're wrapping yourself in a warm blanket. Suddenly there's a thick insulating layer, not only between you and the outside world, but between you and all the stuff in the outside world that was bothering you that you didn't even know was bothering you. All of a sudden, you're just wrapped in a warm blanket. I could easily see why people would lose their lives to it, because who would want that feeling to end? Of course, I ask that, and then I immediately answer it. You want that feeling to end because that's not life. That's the womb. You're only getting this one time to be here. You want the unpleasant stuff and the pleasant stuff. Uh, DT says, speaking of Coachella, well, we were, because we were talking about heroin and cocaine, and I tell you, the dealers converge on Coachella in mass migrations. <laughs> oh, what makes you more loquacious, LSD or mushrooms? Never tried either one. Uh, if you had to indulge in one, which would it be? I wouldn't indulge in either one. Uh, uh, that reading guy eating some ice cream and an extra donut or two on the weekend is my version of damaging myself. <laughs> I can agree with that. I can definitely agree with that. I have every once in a while of course i've mentioned dunkin donuts on this channel many times before uh, it, they're a staple in new england they're a staple in massachusetts there you can't have a, a legitimate residence in massachusetts if you can't see dunkin donuts from your window and every once in a while i feel uh, a craving <laughs> for dunkin donuts and I, I i am feeling that now and i automatically i would just audit i would just say no big deal just indulge it uh, but tomorrow is Marathon Monday, and I am not going anywhere near anywhere where people are on Marathon Monday. So uh, we're gonna have the craving's gonna have to wait. Uh, Richard reads, no one is as young as they used to be. Well, you certainly aren't, <laughs> you grand old man on the mountain. Uh, Jenny Park says, I don't know. Steve's been 28 for the last six years. <laughs> Math is hard. Uh, street medic is. Uh, I have a hole in my sock. 
Okay. <laughs> Perhaps the chat has fallen on thin ice. Uh, Balin321 says, last summer I stayed in a hostel in Dublin. There was a man there that gave me the very the, that ick very intensely. Never felt like that before. People loved him. He turned out to have spiked multiple drinks. People do tend to love these monsters. That also is something they perfect. And, you know, youth hostels across in various locations in the world, I wouldn't say Dublin. But I guess, I guess, I would always think isolated. But maybe the, hur the hurly-burly of a big city is better than isolated. Uh, but a youth hostel? Young people who are looking for acceptance, who are looking for adventure, who are willing to overlook the proprieties, and who are usually stoned off their asses? Yeah, gonna, that's going to be fruitful grounds. Uh, Jenny Park says, Street Medic, where EPS are you feet meant to go? Okay, <laughs> we'll switch back to English. Jasper says, ha, huh, I'll never get old, just watch. Yes, man, we all think that. Uh, Matt Sheridan, I can attest to that feeling about Kemper. It's disturbing how intelligent and likable he comes across while being aware he's a monster. Yeah, you don't know what to do with, with that combination. Uh, Street Medic says, Jenny Park, oh, he's responding to Jenny Parks. Andrew says, currently enjoying Jimmy McDonough's Russ Meyer bio, Big Bosoms and Square Jaws. It's very entertaining, probably more than his films. I don't think that'll be on my list for people in April. Uh, Jay Nicole, the grim sleeper was a garage man. His roaming was his route. A garbage man. Oh, interesting. Oh my, the grim sleeper. That's the one I don't know. Uh, Colin says, hi, Steve. Do you have any recommendation nonfiction about pirates? Uh, thank you. Not overall, no. It, all the pirate recommendations I have would be for specific areas, specific time periods. Um, not just a general history. Every general history of piracy that I've read has been bad. And of course, I can't let the occasion go without recommending Pirates by George MacDonald Fraser. It's a novel. And you will love it. <laughs> but uh, Kevin Jan says, I'm not sure if the case is solved, but I remember reading a couple of years ago about a serial killer who they believed was probably an over-the-road truck driver from Oklahoma or Texas. That rings a bell and could be ringing a bell because it's one of the open cases. That I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a handle on the canonical, I hate to use the word, but you know what I mean, the canonical, that carousel of the, the biggest, worst monsters, the most famous ones. I'm trying to get a handle on those from the 20th century uh, and then move on to the unsolved ones and see if maybe the patterns from the solved ones make give me things to write about for the, the unsolved ones. Uh, Leo Perkar is here. What's your favorite book by Don Winslow? I'm about done with The Force. I really don't want it to be a movie with the weirdos in Hollywood doing films these days. Uh, I don't know what would be my favorite. I I don't tend to think of him that way. I tend to think of him as just writing the same book over and over again. Uh, it wouldn't be The Force, I don't think. I I don't know. I don't know which would be... That's an interesting question. I don't know which would be my favorite. Not the latest one. And not The Force. Uh, but I, I, what, I, even though I can't answer your question, I totally agree with you. I don't want any properties that I've liked in any way to be touched by modern Hollywood. Uh, uh, oh, wait, I... The chat jumped again, and it jumped when I didn't even get the name of the person. Choco. There we go. Saying hi, Frida. Yes, there's Frida. There's the baby. Just relaxing next to me, that's all. Uh, uh, Richard Reeves. Jesus, I hope every Steve Dream isn't about serial killers. No, no. I, I wasn't intending this one to be. I wanted to talk about all kinds of books. I have all kinds of books here. I have uh, Emotional Intelligence for Dummies, second edition. <laughs> For instance, I have a, a 19th century biography of Pericles to go with my Steve Tiberius Donahue book club. We just got stuck on serial killers, that's all. Uh, Michael Lombardo, have you read oh, today's New York Times? Anything especially irritating in there today? Uh, I have read... Excuse me. I have read the Times. Uh, I paid a lot of attention to the, the main article in the magazine about Alvin Bragg and the New York prosecution of Donald Trump. And of course, uh, there's the book review, which has Andy Jacobs' book on the cover, and that's it's been getting a lot of press, a lot more than I thought. Here I want to mention that one of the first uh, critical discussions of it anywhere was on Cedarburg Public Library's Books of the Week. The last thing we will ever claim to be is timely or prescient, but we did talk about the book there. Uh, but no, I didn't, I didn't encounter anything especially annoying, but I, I skipped a lot of sections 
that I will be getting to tonight. Uh, Balin321 says, what is your view on the Unabomber? I know he isn't a typical killer, but he's the only one that still has some following. Oh, I don't think he's the only one that still has some following. But yeah, he wouldn't fall, he wouldn't fall in the ambit that I'm talking about. Uh, I thought his case was fascinating. I followed it right from the beginning. But he wouldn't he wouldn't be involved in the I don't think he he certainly won't be involved in the project that I, in the research that I'll be doing if this project happens because he is different. He is not a typical serial killer. I want the trapdoor spiders. I want the ones who do actually get hold of their victims. Uh, Follow Smoke says how often do you think a book is released that would stand the test of time? Something that is still read in 200 years. How do you identify a book like that when it's new? You don't identify a book like that when it's new. But if the thing that will make it survive 200 years is quality, which is, I think, a fallacy. I don't think that's usually the reason. But if we were to say that, which is the only thing we can look at now, if we were to look at, at that as a yardstick, it's maybe one book every two years, every three years, maybe one book, maybe two books. It's not many, any more than it ever has been. Uh, DT says, my abandoned serial killer novel was about a guy getting a roommate and begins to suspect his new roommate is a personable serial killer. Uh, well, that sounds good. You shouldn't abandon that. Uh, that reading guy's back. When people accuse you of being a know-it-all, I think they find your self-confidence and assertiveness off-putting, maybe even threatening based on their own insecurities. You read more than them. Okay, well, that makes a kind of sense. That That makes a kind of sense. But you all know me. Uh, there is there is an assertiveness that doesn't care what you think, and then there's this assertiveness that does. I'd like to think that any, well, the people that, that are the the ones the rando Kairosians that are dropping in and leaving know it all comments don't watch any videos, so they don't they literally don't know what they're talking about. But I'd like to think that if you watch videos, even a handful of them, you know the difference between those two kinds of arrogance. The the, the kind of arrogance that doesn't care what you think and it hasn't changed its opinion since the 1970s is extremely off putting. It's extremely boring. I don't believe that people would watch that. Uh, although. Better than food. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that reading guy continues. Snobs, if they read as much as you, they would not let anyone forget it. Uh, Jasper says, individuals form an uber creature, a leviathan perhaps. Do I smell Hobbes? We don't want to go down any route that even approaches philosophy, or we will summon Jared Anderson. <laughs> we don't want to do that. <laughs> but <sighs> isn't the basic idea correct? Is there any way you can deny that it's correct? Uh, DT says, can you give us a broad outline of what your serial killer project is? Well, I don't know that it's my project. I have not agreed. I do not know that it's going to happen. And if it happens right now, on paper, it does not have a broad outline. I'm the one giving it a broad outline because I don't want to feel like I don't know the subject. Any subject. Whatever it is. Uh, uh, even... <laughs> 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 even the Habsburgs. <laughs> I, I, no matter what it is, I'm always going to do the, go 10 times the extra mile. Not only because I don't want to seem like an uninformed idiot, a la Bill, Bill O'Reilly, but also because I've got the leisure. I've got the ability to do it. I've, I've got the, the time, and thanks to the internet, I've got a vast amount of resources to do this sort of thing in a small amount of time, in a freakishly small amount of time. I have the ability, so I might as well. Uh, but if the project continue, go, does happen, and if I'm involved, right now on paper, it's only about one serial killer. Not all these topics that we're talking about tonight. It's not about any of them. Uh, so I, and I don't see that as being likely. I don't see that as being viable. It's not really my place to say, unless asked. And I, it, the video conference today came close to asking. One person came close to, one person seemed to get, oh, okay, so this isn't, this isn't a pimply-faced, needy freelancer who's just going to say, yes, sir, how high, sir. Maybe this guy knows some things. Maybe we should be taking advantage of that. I didn't push it. I didn't suggest it. And one person today seemed to sense that and might ask, well, you know, do you think this is viable? <laughs> uh, but anyway, <clears throat> books for Eric. I found a copy of Asimov's Paradise Lost for $7 at a used bookstore. Read it promptly, sold it on eBay for three hundred. Good lord, you flipped a book! <laughs> How amazing! Uh, it'll turn up at the battle. I'm sure that it will. Uh, Jasper says, oh, "OJ can rest now, knowing his wife's killer is dead." Yes. <laughs> uh, Aaron says, "Too bad the AMC Vampire Chronicles series sucked." Yeah, yeah. 
I vaguely remember it. It's hard for me to remember any kind of video uh, production through the fog of Boy Kills World. <laughs> that is the only thing I'm thinking about when it comes to video productions of any kind. Uh, Tolstoy 111 is responding, calling Eric the price gouger. Uh, Aaron is questioning, Steve tried heroin. Yes, I did. I wanted to know. I didn't want to just read about it. I wanted to know. I wanted to know what it felt like. I knew I was in no danger. So I tried it. Uh, yeah. Uh, Matt Sheridan says, mushrooms seem fun. See, they don't seem fun to me. Heroin and cocaine seem like adding sensations to your rock core. No pun intended. Whereas LSD and mushrooms seem like uh, doing an ice pick into the rock core. Chipping and cracking at the rock core. I don't want to do that. I don't even want to risk that. Uh, Jasper says, we all tried heroin while you weren't here, Aaron. <laughs> Jenny Park says, mushrooms are only fun on pizza or in Mario. Uh, Matt Schroeder says, Duncan Crave is strong. Sometimes it is. If you felt it, you know. It is. So you can go months. And then all of a sudden you have that craving and you just, fortunately, you're not, if you're in Boston, you're not far from a Dunkin' Donuts. You can go and satisfy it. And I am feeling it, but I don't want to step out of doors on Mon on Marathon Monday, much less go anywhere where people will gather. Uh, although I guess, I guess the marathon loonies that are, that are, are, are thousands of them are in Boston now, I guess Dunkin' Donuts is the last place I'd go, right? Uh, uh, Aaron says, mushrooms are nicknamed the hug drug. They're pretty great. Okay. Uh, Jasper says, I can never do heroin because I have an opioid intolerance. I didn't know there was such a thing. Uh, that reading guy says, Steve's description of his heroin experience is similar to my addiction to Steve's videos. <laughs> Some call it Stockholm Syndrome. I don't think my videos are like being wrapped in a warm blanket. I really don't think so. <laughs> uh, Balin321, wait, so you tried heroin but not LSD. Usually people try mushrooms and LSD once or twice but not heroin. You were never curious. I'm not curious about LSD or mushrooms, no. Or acid of any kind. I was curious about the big two. Heroin and cocaine. Not any of the others. Uh, DT, the guy who tried heroin won't touch LSD or mushrooms. How come? Are they really awful? Or more awful than heroin? Well, I mentioned it. The, the effect seems to me different. It seems to, the, Heroin and cocaine, it seems to me like you're adding an effect from the outside. And LSD and you know, acid and you know, stuff like that strikes me that there you're changing the inside. And it's the effect is radiating outward. I don't want to do that. Uh, number four says, Sup, Steve Dog. The, uh, the epithet dog is always extra pointed when it comes to me. Uh, Matt Sheridan, what's really disturbing about Kemper is that he's using the same demeanor he used to lure his victims. Yeah, yeah, that, that aspect thinking, well, I, I haven't seen it with Kemper because I haven't watched the thing you're talking about, but I've seen it with John Wayne Gacy. You definitely sense that you are seeing something that those boys saw. A, just an a interesting, jovial, normal guy. Uh, Aaron says, Travolta asked an addict what heroin was like for Pulp Fiction. He was told to get drunk on tequila and float on his back in a warm pool. <laughs> uh, Jasper says, I think Jack the Ripper was probably also killing along his route to work. Killing when convenient. Oh, no. No, no, no. I disagree. I disagree completely. No, no, there was nothing nothing opportunistic or convenient about the Ripper killings. I don't think. Uh, Monet Doyle reading about serial killers would give me nightmares. No, thank you. <laughs> JLK says, keep hearing about wine and calzones at Hyde Cottage, and I want to ask, what kind of wine and what goes in a calzone? Well, the place next door has all kinds of options for calzones. Or pizzas, or subs, or whatever. They're, they're just a normal, you know, fry shop. So they have, there are lots and lots of options. They're and the portions are enormous. And the food is very good. And the wine is just, well, I used to say it's just cheap red wine. Just go to the wine shop. There never was one here, but now there is one. Just up the street a bit. Uh, you go to the wine shop and get the cheapest bottle of red wine. Uh, but then David Murphy and I explored boxed wines. And they are just fine. And they're, they're a lot more economical. You can, you can make a whole shelf of boxed wine uh, for you know, comparatively a lot less money than a whole rack of bottled wine. That's a lot less fuss to deal with, too. Probably more recyclable. Uh, uh, Maximus Stedich, didn't Daniel Defoe write a general history of pirates? How is that? He did. It's a little bit on the loquacious side. I don't know that you would that you would enjoy it in the way that you enjoy a lot of his stuff. Uh, Jasper Antonelli, boy, this stream has everything. Serial killers, heroin, Coachella. Oh, wait. Uh, I, I lost you. You weren't done with your string, your string of things that are in this stream, although I agree with you. 
it does everything. Maybe that's why I'm the greatest uh, streamer of them all. Uh, maybe that's why. Uh, even though I don't have headphones. But we, we, we need to find you. We, uh, yes, Coachella and also much worse books. Yes, we have books. I haven't, I haven't shown them to you. I mean, I'm showing you them. Like, for instance, this thing. The Flickr Men. Uh, for a book from 10 years ago that I'm, I'm don't, don't remember really savaging. I'm going to read it again. Uh, Siva Bronstein, one of the OJ jurors, sounded genuine the other day when she said that the racist cop, Furman, created reasonable doubt and that the verdict wasn't racially motivated. Is she lying to herself? I don't know that she's lying to herself about the racial motivation. I don't think it's, I think it's as clear as day with Furman. But uh, I don't think there was any reasonable doubt in the case at all. I don't think there was. Maybe that's just because I'm so familiar with what the LAPD thought about OJ that I, I'm reading that in. Uh, uh, Richard Reed says, actually, Defoe writing it was a theory. It has since been abandoned. Uh, Street Medic says, I'm skeptical about who, the, the volume that I read of that had his name proudly on it. Uh, but that was, it was a very, very old volume. It was from the 19th century. Uh, excuse me. A street medic says, I'm skeptical about who and how many victims Jack the Ripper killed. Uh, he wasn't the only murderer running around London then. Well, no, but he had a signature, right? Uh, no, not literally, I mean. Uh, Balin321 says, does Boston have any famous serial killers? Boston has a couple of famous murderers. Uh, and only, as far as I know, one serial killer that made any kind of headlines. And I need to look into that. But unfortunately, that serial killer is minor. I hate to say that about any serial killer, but that serial killer is nowhere near the top 20. And right now I am looking at the top 20. Uh, I'm trying to really familiarize myself with them before I move on, before I branch out. Uh, that reading guy says, what do you think of Pericles as a historical figure? Thucydides had a man crush on him. Everybody has a man crush on him. He's dreamy. He's wonderful. Uh, he's the 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 bro tube boy dal. Again, we shouldn't be saying these things, or we will summon Jared Anderson. Uh, Steve Bronstein says, "Can emotional intelligence be quantified separately from IQ?" No, it can't. It's bunk. It's pure bunk. Uh, do you think someone has a high with a high IQ can have extremely low emotional intelligence, or vice versa? <laughs> Obviously, we all know people who have high IQs, really, really uh, so-called book smart, whose emotions are a wreck. But that is not that does not mean that there is such a thing as, as emotional intelligence or that it is any of the things that its proponents claim it is. Uh, Richard Reed, the Hyde Cottage Ripper. Too much work. Too much of a mess. Frida is the closest that things get to a Hyde Cottage Ripper. Because <laughs> she will occasionally, as you know, she will occasionally rouse herself from being absolutely cuddly and adorable. She will sometimes rouse herself and then make a concerted effort to kill somebody. She'll just be going at them, trying to bite and nibble them to death, all in an adorable way. Uh, so you'll die happy. Uh, Jenny Parks, Jasper, we all know, we all, we, all we need now is a book about serial killer heroin addicts killing at Coachella. I'm sure there's been a self-published book about someone killing at Coachella. I'm sure that has happened. Uh, Aaron, wasn't the Night Stalker a Boston boy? Mm -hmm. uh, Jasper, the Unabomber, has followers in the political mainstream. Both right and left-wing extremists read his manifesto and internally recommend it. Good Lord. Uh, Street Medic says the Night Stalker was a great TV show. <laughs> uh, the Boston Strangler. Aaron mentions the Boston Strangler. I'm going to have to get involved in all of these things, but uh, the, I, to my mind, the Night Stalker and the Boston, the Boston Strangler don't rise to the level. Maybe uh, uh, they do, and I'm just, there's such background noise to me that I'm not seeing that. I, I'm at the beginning of this journey, I fear. Uh, Steve Bronstein, Mindhunter is good, but there's a show about a serial killer who kidnaps his therapist, played by Steve Carell, which is pretty silly. Okay. Uh, Matt Sheridan, who do you think Arthur, do you think Arthur Lee Allen was the Zodiac Killer? I think so, but I have not. The Zodiac Killer, I have not got to yet. The carousel has not revolved to the Zodiac Killer. Uh, the street medic Pericles funeral oration is one of the best speeches in history. I disagree. I know that puts me in the extreme minority, but uh, certainly everyone says that. But I disagree. I've never seen that. 
oh no, we did summon Jared Anderson. Oh my God, he's here. Uh, okay, great. Uh, Aaron says the Cormac McCarthy subreddit found Steve's review of the road recently. They see, did they really? Oh my, I did four videos on the road. They are not answerable. My critics, my criticism of the book is not answerable. I intentionally restricted myself to things that are on the page. The only way you could answer it is if you said, I know these things are there. I now see that you are right. They are simply false. And I don't care. The only route I left open to dude bros in my, in my four video savaging of the road was simply to say, I don't care. I like what I like what I like. Thumb in my mouth. Uh, but I have not seen, it might be fun to look at this subreddit. Uh, Jenny Park says, Jared is the new Beetlejuice. <laughs> Matt, Matt Sheridan says, I have to read the subreddit now. So do I. I'll have to find it. Uh, Jasper Antonelli, oh, I can't believe that, that they found it after all these years. Uh, Jasper Antonelli says, oh dear, everybody abandoned ship. The word Hobbs summoned Jared. Yes, it did. I worried. I did warn you all. Uh, Jasper says, oh, I saw that Reddit post. It's top of the post of the month with 300 upvotes or something like that. Okay, but people, I assume that, w that the seething part is happening. I assume that no one is agreeing with my criticism of the road. And since it's Reddit, I assume there's a lot of ad hominem crap Who's this old guy? Why does he look this way? Et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure there's a lot of that. Uh, uh, Balin321, I would imagine that for the act of killing, isolation would be important. But for any other deed like SA Youth Hostel seems like the ideal location. Young tourists are unlikely to report, stick around. Right. It's a, it's a split. I One thing I've noticed, I mean, to get back to the to the point that I was making earlier, is that Sure, the the weird motive and the weird you know profile, the victim profile, the one you're most likely to go after, and the locations and whatnot. Sure, fine, taunting the police sometimes. Sure, but no matter what, you are left with getting rid of the body, or in multiple bodies. Where how are you going to do that? And the more forensically aware society becomes, the harder it is to do that without that leading you straight leading investigators straight back to you so you either have to have a way to get rid of the body so john wayne gacy for instance had his own crawl space he had his own basement uh the candy man had a storage shed that was his alone he could lock it no one else could go in there but otherwise anyway that's one important thing either you have to have a space of your own or you have to pick victims from a class where people aren't going to care about the bodies. Where you don't have to worry about disposing of the bodies because no one's going to care about them one way or another. Uh, which you, it would bring you back to some youth hostels in some countries. Uh, Monet Dola says, I prefer reading romance books. I do too. Uh, Balin Feature One, the only good thing to come out of Cormac McCarthy for me is discovering my confessions by Samuel Chamberlain. Uh, Freeman says, The Border Trilogy is Winslow's best work. Richard Reed says, Steve tried heroin and maple syrup. <laughs> maple syrup is the heroin of Vermont. Uh, Jasper says, there's a difference. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Colin, would you ever do an essential pirate literature list? I doubt it. Uh, Jenny Park says, heroin is probably easier to buy. Yes, I think so. I think it's easier to come by. I didn't buy either, uh, either of the samples that I used, so I wouldn't know. Uh, DT says, speaking of emotional intelligence, I have a gentleman on the spectrum I care for. And although he realizes what's going on, he, fa he fails, falls miserably short. Any advice? Oh, God. You're the one who's a caregiver. You're in a better position to advise than I am. I, you're, you're stronger than I am. That's for sure. Uh, Matt Sheridan, wasn't your last visit to Duncan quite unpleasant? It was. Quite unpleasant. Uh, but nevertheless, the heart wants what the heart wants. <laughs> Cravings do happen. Uh, uh, Siva Bronstein says, did you ever try heroin and cocaine together? Asking for a friend. No, I've never tried them together. Uh, Street Medic says, I just stabbed my Caesar salad with a fork and said, et tu, Brutus. <laughs> Kevin JN says, I saw a vampire museum just opened its doors in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Vampirism is fascinating. Must be my Catholic upbringing. Uh, Balin321 says, I agree with your assessment of LSD. Jung seemed to mellow out after he started taking it. Changed in some way. Don't like that. Uh, Follow Smoke says, I would imagine heroin is like an opiate pain pill, but more so. Yeah. Yeah. If you've, if you've gone to the hospital and you've been given just their, their routine, op the routine opiate, and you get that in hospitals, you'll sometimes get that little, uh, call button that you can, you can press to, so to get someone to 
come and give you more. Or in some cases, you can just self-medicate. You can just dose yourself. Uh, and it's like that, only much stronger. Much, much stronger. Um, Jenny Parks, what did the salad ever do to you? All right. Uh, Scott Jones says, reminds me of Kirk explaining Spock's address in Star Trek IV. I think he took a little too much LDS. Uh, uh, Mar Mark Richardson says, that is a classic moment. He's entirely right. You're not exactly catching us at our best. <laughs> uh, uh, Matt Sheridan says, pizza and diet pepper. Diet Dr. Pepper for me. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, let's see here. Aaron says, there was a wine shop in St. Paul that only sold wine bottles under $20 a bottle. The place that's up the street, they have some that are very expensive. I don't think they have the clientele. I don't think they're in the right area. So I keep expecting them to announce that they're closing, but they, they're mighty damn convenient, and they haven't announced that yet. Uh, Balin321 says, God, the Flicker men mean something very different in Dutch. Yes, <laughs> yes this is a, a novel about a physicist who amazingly discovers physical proof of the human soul and then discovers that there are people on earth who don't exhibit it who don't have that and uh, i we're gonna have to see we're, we're gonna have to see the flicker man is definitely on the on the the routine uh monado says it's 72 degrees right now in georgia good lord 72 degrees at what is it it's nine there right quarter to nine uh, Street Medic says, my wife just corrected me and said, it's Brute, not Brutus. That's what I get for marrying a college graduate. Yeah, I just assume you were Latinizing it. It's, it's et tu Brute from Julius Caesar. Uh, Jasper Antonelli, we need a Jack the Ripper stream and a starter kit. Do you think he killed after 1888? I personally suspect he did. Maybe he just changed methods like Peter Sutcliffe did. Uh, uh, no, I don't think he killed after 1888. And I'd love to know what you mean by Peter Sutcliffe changing methods. Love to know what you mean by that. Uh, JLK, all this talk of murder has reminded me that tonight is the anniversary of the Lincoln assassination. Yes, the Lincoln assassination. Uh, Balin321, the Nuremberg trial IQ test should permanently dispel all notion that intelligent men need to be good. Uh, Kevin JN says, oh, I can't wait for Steve's top 10 serial killers video. I'm not going to be doing such a video. I'm surprised booktubers looking for fame haven't done it yet. I'm not going to be doing such a video. Trust me. Uh, that reading guy said, oh, uh, I wonder what level of emotional intelligence Sherlock Holmes has, or better yet, his brother. Emotional intelligence. Yeah. Look for my review. <laughs> uh, uh, Aaron, I was wrong. Night Stalker was based in California, but the Boston Strangler. Uh, you've got that right. You couldn't miss that. Uh, Michael Lombardo reminds me of that episode of Taxi when Jim first tries marijuana brownies, setting him on the road to ruin. DT says, do you classify the social media psychos as serial killers, uh, seeing as they just got Piscor? Well, no, because they didn't do it in person. The, 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 the thing, they're murderers, certainly, but they're, and they should all be fired. They should all be fired. They, I, I know the law can't touch them. But their, their companies, Marvel and DC, should fire a lot of them. They killed this guy. Uh, but no, uh, th th as I was mentioning with, uh, with for instance, I, I would even go so far as to say the Bell Tower Killer or the DC Sniper, but certainly the Unabomber. I'm talking about trapdoor spiders. I'm talking about people who have actual contact with their victims. Uh, so I, And they would never do that. So I'm not talking about them either. Uh, that reading guy, you need to do an interview with Jared again. You guys have great conversations. We should. It'd be nice if we did. It takes two to tango. I can't just make an interview happen with him or Ami. Uh, Matt Sheridan says, is responding to Jenny Parks. Richardson Reed says, who is this old guy? Why does he look this way? <laughs> that's, that's. I'm sure I will look at this Reddit, this subreddit. It'll be fun anyway. But I'm sure that's what it is. It's just because I'm poking at their god. They're not going to like that. Uh, Jasper says, lots of ad hominem about how you look, how you talk, the way you were holding the book, etc. Very little reaction to what was to that wasn't just seething rage. Yeah, uh, that's what I'd expect. Maybe it's not worth my while to look at it. Uh, it, 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 it. This isn't a literary thing for the people who feel that way. It isn't a literary thing at all for them. And I was addressing it as a literary thing, so that, that, I'm not going to care. Uh, Monet Doyle says, there is nothing better than hot donuts from Krispy Kreme. I agree. I'm, it's disloyal for me to say Krispy Kreme donuts are, of course, better than Dunkin' Donuts donuts, but nevertheless, hometown team. <laughs> uh, Jay Nicole, Night Stalker, was born in Texas. He killed in L.A. He was conditioned by a cousin who was a killer. 
you, with the thing about conditioning, that's coming up a lot. And I think that's going to come up a lot more. Uh, that thing about conditioning is really interesting. Where, what made these people into what they are? I don't want to overdose on the Freudian stuff. Not all of us had rosy childhoods. We didn't end up stuffing people in closets or storage spaces. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, Scott Jones says, that's rich. How dare he hold the book by its outside edges? Well, I should have been holding it as a Bible, right? Nice and reverent. I'm sure that it's just going to be ad hominem stuff. Uh, that's that's all right. Uh, that's okay. Uh, Matt Sheridan says, I wish you would interview that Bigfoot Museum guy again. That interview was fascinating. Yeah, it was. I should. I should reach out. He's He'd be willing to do it again. Or maybe, to keep things interesting, maybe reach out to some other Bigfoot researcher. Not just the same guy again. I mean, he was great on camera. Not everyone is. But I could easily reach out to others, and some of them want some. Want, someone might say yes. I would love to interview Eli Watson on the subject. Eli Watson, I, I, you never know quite what you're going to get with big search researchers, but I I know that he, under fire, holds to the idea of that this is just an, an animal. This is a kind of animal. He 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 does not want to indulge in the supernatural explanation for this thing, and I don't want to really interview somebody that does. So him or Dr. Jeff Meldrum, uh, Alex Petikoff, I would like to interview, the, maybe not the same guy, maybe go back, you're right, I will put that idea in my head. I will go back to the Bigfoot community. Uh, uh, Monet Doyle says, Steve, you didn't mention the killer BTK. Well, he came up last night, and he is definitely on my list. Uh, DT says there's a 160 character limit for these chats. Also, there's an auto filter to leading comments if they cross some invisible YouTube line. And in this stream of serial killers, I've seen a lot of chats disappear. Oh my, is that true? Well, I had a lot, a lively chat, even so. Uh, Nick Piccarilli, the best part of the Reddit post is a comment saying you are just after clicks. <laughs> it's, it's the world they know, right? It's, it's only you people who are going to look at that and think that's hilarious. It's the world they know. It makes sense to them. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to look at this. Um, uh, Steve Abramski says, what happened to Roseanne? Yeah. If you mean Roseanne Barr, yeah, Trump has happened to her. Uh, Matt Sheridan, I highly recommend From Hell by Alan Moore for anyone interested in Jack the Ripper. I second that recommendation. Steve Abramski says, do you follow any Y2 any YouTube channels of people documenting their struggles with cancer? No, I don't. Uh, Jasper Antonelli, starting to suspect Steve has some such strong opinions about Jack the Ripper because he knew him. <laughs> Uh, Jenny Park says maybe Steve stashed him at Odeon in Leeds. We've solved the mystery. <laughs> uh, Colin says Whitey Bulger was based in Boston. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not going to include him as a serial killer because he worked. I mean, he was a serial killer, but I want, I'm going to have to define my terms, obviously, but I want the kind. He was a superstructure, he was part of a superstructure, he wasn't a rogue element. His, ser his serial killing was for a, an outside, dispassionate purpose. It might have been satisfying urges inside him, but th those urges weren't the things making him do it. So I, I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to include him. Uh, Steve Bronstein says, "What do you think of the John Mearsheimer and Jeffrey Sachs lines of thinking on the Russia slash Ukraine, Israel slash Hamas situations?" Not much. Uh, I don't. I don't think a lot of what they're saying. I don't think is very helpful. Uh, Jared Henderson is back. We could do an interview, or we can just wait until I'm in Boston. Hopefully, May. I am never going to come to Boston, but we could do a video or uh, multiple videos. We could do that. Uh, Michael Lombardo says in the Sopranos episode, they literally butchered the corpses in the kitchen of an associate restaurant after hours. Where you'd need something like a, a kitchen butchering apparatus or your own private place of some kind uh uh matt Sheridan says dude bro fury well i'll have to go and see i, I guess i could stir them my god i could make them radioactive if i not only went to the subreddit but joined it and started responding to people wouldn't that be fun oh that might be worth some that might be worth an hour of fun to get all those people worked up uh jenny park says "Ooh, a jasper and steve brattle hall uh, Jasper says, I assume you mean Jared. Yes, it would be Jared and me. If he comes to Boston, he's welcome. You all are. Uh, Stephen Bronstein says, do you think the world central kitchen incident was an accident or an accident? There's no way that it was accidental. Not in the pure sense of, of just something that no way you don't follow people from car to car by accident. No, I, I, there, it might 
on the outside, the very outside of observable reality, it might have been one huge misunderstanding, but I doubt it. I doubt it. Uh, Scott Jones says, opinions on Murakami? I tried Wind Up Bird very recently as my first sample. It was very missed for me. Uh, any suggestions for better ones before I swear him off? I no, I don't know about better or worse. Uh, some parts, some members of my jury are still out on Murakami. But if you read Wind Up Bird Chronicle and it did nothing for you, then nothing he wrote is going to do anything for you. Uh, Balin321 says, Ha, I suppose somebody in the subreddit said the phrase bro lit is offensive and shallow. I don't know. They don't tend to do the, the event, offensive bit. Uh, but the, I can I can definitely believe that they are just seething and inchoate outrage because I'm attacking one of their gods. Uh, but I my attacks of those books, I have been doing book criticism for a long time. I'm on pretty solid ground when I do it. And my attacks on that book were not just gaseous opinion. Uh, not at all. In order, they are, several of my attacks on that book are unanswerable. In other words, when you hear them, you have to admit they are true, and you have to just say, I don't care. That's the only place I gave you to go for some of them. Uh, uh, Let's see here. That reading guy says, been reading Plato's Apology and some someone who claims to be humble, he sure can't shut up about how wise he is. Ah, he goes on and on. Notice uh, why he's so approved uh, of by BroTube. Uh, Colin says, what's your favorite Star Trek movie? Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. Maltz! Shoi! <laughs> uh, Jenny Parker's Return of the Jedi, Colin. <laughs> Scott Jones says, Wrath of Khan is obviously the answer, but I think I've grown be fonder of Search for Spock. Well, he wasn't asking for the best Star Trek movie. He was asking for my favorite. Wrath of Khan is an obvious answer, but my favorite is The Search for Spock. Uh, Tolstoy111 says, I just emailed you the Reddit thread. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. Thank you. But we do have to wrap this stream up. Uh, even though we this has been a lot of fun, we, we do still have to wrap this up. Uh, Balin321 says, there is a top chat and a live chat. And in the top chat, I see chats disappear. Top chat filters without your permission. It certainly does. I don't know the difference between top chat and live chat, but I'm not doing anything. I'm not touching the stream. Uh, Street Medic says, my wife, a psychology major, wrote a paper on Jack the Ripper in college, which was pretty good. Uh, Richardson Reed says, watch her. I was just about to say the same thing. Uh, Scott Jones says, agreed on World Central Kitchen. Uh, that reading guy says, what are the other books you have nearby? What is your next read for tonight? Uh, well, I'm not going to be reading emotional intelligence for dummies tonight. Uh, I will be reading The Flicker Men. Uh, and I, I just dipped a toe in this old biography of Pericles. I will be re I will be reading the whole of this. I, I got this uh, months ago. It has fold out maps and everything from the from the 1890s. Uh, and I will be I will be finishing up with uh, uh, Lee Brackett's collection of her husband's work. This the it's really charming. And there's no volume in the old Ballantine Best of series that's quite like this one, where you get Lee Brackett to, uh, to edit, and then you get Edmund Hamilton to write an afterward when she when she's done with the thing. That is utterly charming. There's nothing quite like that in this series. Uh, but there will also be new books. I, I'm, uh, I don't have one near me here, but uh, I'm, I finished with Shylock's Venice, and now I need to dig it. Now I need to dig into it. So there'll be a lot of that tonight. Uh, Jay Nicole says, my chats have disappeared because I erased them. My finger sometimes doesn't fit the phone's keys, and I have typos. Street Medic says, yeah, Socrates was kind, was kind of pushy, and it got him killed. <laughs> uh, wait, there was, a, there was a smiley face there. There we go. Jasper says, I recall most comments were about your teeth because of the thumbnail. Yeah. Uh, silly stuff like that, but it, it's, I understand. I totally sympathize. I am not YouTube photogenic. Uh, uh, let's see here. Scott Jones says, and he was stinky. Diogenes gave him a run for his money though. Uh, DT says, do you like Elena Ferranti's Neapolitan novels? No, haven't heard other books by her, but I'm wondering what you're, th what you thought of them. Did they live up to the high praise and her resulting cult? No, no, they do not. Uh, I, I predict, I mean, reading tastes differ, but I predict that if you read one, your first reaction will be, this is what all the fuss was about. Uh, Matthias and 32 new to your channel, how much do you, like, do you think canonical literature influences culture, i.e. Western culture, even for people who don't really read? Virtually not at all. In the present moment? Virtually not at all. Nobody reads. 
<laughs> Nobody reads. You can fill a, 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 a one large event stadium. I won't say the Odeon at Leeds, but one a large event stadium would hold all of the serious readers in the world. <laughs> in the world. So, I don't think it affects anything. Uh, Street Medic says, Wrath of Khan, hands down, for favorite. Or are you saying for best and favorite? Uh, that reading guy, I have some homework to do, and yet I am here. Yes, I have the equivalent of homework to do myself, but we'll wrap up at 10 past the hour. Uh, uh, Jared Henderson says, Steve, despite you, I just bought a ticket to Boston. No, you did not. You're not coming over for wine and calzones. That would break the internet if you did. That would be wonderful. Uh, Sean G says, when you finish the top 100 books, yeah, I need to do another. I don't know when I'm going to finish, but I need to do another episode. I should do another episode this coming week. Uh, Matt Sheridan says, The Empire Strikes Back. You're all listing non-Star Trek movies, which is illogical. Uh, Colin says, What do you think of Family of Secrets by Russ Baker? Um, it's not ringing a bell. Did I read Family of Secrets? It's not, not always good with... Uh, I'm not, it's not ringing a bell. Uh or it is ringing a bell, faint bell. I'm not, I don't have an, an opinion on the subject, obviously. Uh, Matt Schindler says the best Star Trek movie was Howard the Duck. Uh, okay. uh, Scott Jones is celebrating the fact that Jared Henderson is coming to Boston. That would be wonderful if he does. It'd be wonderful. You'll get a video out of it. Uh, that reading guy says, what will you read on your Kindle? My Kindle is, is not actually nearby. Uh, but I have the, uh, the huge iPad, and I will be reading uh, one of the things that I have recently got from an aggregator site. I downloaded a few today. Uh, so what are they? Uh, yeah, I will choose between one of these two. Here, let me... They both look interesting. I will, I will choose between one of these two uh, for the electronic portion of our show. Uh, let me get you the cover of the first one. This was free today. This is probably still free on one of those sites. This is by Adam Davis, and it's called The Medieval Economy of Salvation. And it's about medieval hospitals. I didn't dim the, the screen there, but that's what the... I, it will either be that, or it will be one of the other things that I downloaded today, uh, which is a thriller of some kind. It's... Uh, the first Connor Callahan novel, and it's called, it's by Reagan Reagan Keeter, and it's called Gone. It'll be one of those two things, unless Gone is a really fast read, in which case it might be both. Uh, because I'm going to do I'm going to do a lot of reading tonight, a huge amount of reading. Uh, Sean G says, "Can you pause the stream for two hours? Have to go to work." No, I'm going to end the stream. Uh, Jasper says, first Steve was plagued with an economist, next a philosopher. I know. I know. <laughs> first an economist, now a philosopher. Uh, Guilty Fighter X says, hello, Steve. You mentioned in one of your videos that you were on the lookout for a favorite edition of The Wind in the Willows, but you didn't say what it was. I would love to know. I don't have the details. I know it. I know what it looks like. I know exactly what it is. And when I find it, I know that I will know that I find it. It'll, I don't have the details. I'll know it when I see it. And it will turn up at the battle. I'm sure that it will. Uh, uh, Nick, Jay Nicole says one more killer the duo of the Hillside Strangler all the killers I mentioned I believe left the victims where they attacked but not sure yeah the, the Hillside Stranglers I'm, I'm, I haven't got to them and they're going to be low on my priority list I'm kind of thinking about uh, people who largely acted alone although the Candyman blurs that line just a, a little maybe more than a little that I think that the Candyman's two accomplices, the ones that, that went to jail, one of them just recently died of COVID in 2020. Uh, but I tend, to think, I, I tend to think they do blur the line because I don't think they were ever sure they weren't going to die. Whereas the Hillside Stranglers, that's not the case. They were colleagues. I, but with, with the Candyman, I am including them because I'm pretty sure that they were could easily have been victims. Obviously, they could easily have been victims. Uh, DT says, do you classify for anti stuff as autofiction? I bet I do. Uh, Scott Jones says, I was referring to Socrates, not you, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. That's a relief. <laughs> uh, but we do have to start wrapping this up, right? DT says, I did read all of Ferrante's Neapolitan. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. Uh, uh, normal readers who aren't caught up in it, I believe that's what they would think. Uh, Jasper Antonelli says, the vermin demand one 
more book list video. Well, I will. I'm, I'm going to get all the way to number one. Uh, Jared Henderson says, I'm emailing mailing you the confirmation of the flight. All right, this is apparently going to happen. Uh, that reading guy, Jared, will bring the baby. No, I don't think so. <laughs> no, there's only room for one on the David Murphy Memorial cot. Uh, Jared will bring the baby. Grandpa Steve can help change the diapers as Jared gets some much-needed sleep. The much-needed sleep, I imagine, and that can happen here. Uh, Matt Sheridan says, are you a Wesley Crusher fan? No, no, I'm not. Uh, JLK, I saw a video walkthrough of the new Barnes & Noble rebrand. Looks like it wants to be an Apple store. I have mixed feelings on the walkthroughs that I've watched. Uh, DT, can you speculate what women saw in those Franti novels that appealed to them? I bring it up because I'm throwing them out. I do not know. I do not understand the appeal of these things at all, any more than I understand the appeal of my struggle. I don't. They, they rocketed to, to superstardom at the same time, and they both mystified me. Uh, N.P. Hunt says, what do you think of the cases slash case of Otis Toole and Henry Lee Lucas? I'd be surprised if they had genuinely committed just one of the many murders they sought credit for. That's another odd case. I don't know this one. Uh, Jared Henderson says, I have emailed you a screenshot of my flight, so clear your calendar. Internet, prepare to be broken. Yes, you will, you, I, will, I will dust off the David Murphy Memorial Cot. You can come over and we can have some fun. Uh, Aaron Hook says, is responding to that reading guy. Uh, J Scott Jones says, medieval hospitals seem fascinating. I don't think I've ever read a book on the subject, and it was free. It's a work of genuine scholarship, and it was free. So, uh, Street Medic says, if Mad Magazine's snappy answers to stupid questions by Al Jaffe isn't at the pinnacle of your list of greatest books of all time, I'll have to question your judgment. Uh, Jenny Park says, Steve handling a child like a biological grenade could be fun. Uh, well, let's see here. Alexander Bukal. Have you read any romantic suspense novels lately? How about from Harlequin? No, I'm a little bit behind in my Harlequin categories. I really need to do that. And I think I thought there was a romantic suspense for April that I kind of like the look of. So I, that's a good that's a good reminder. I should go and do that. Uh, N.P. Hunt says the Reader's Digest Wind in the Willows is gorgeous one. I started getting though a few of those recently. I liked it, but it's not the one I'm thinking of. I wouldn't pass it up if I found it for a dollar. Uh, Richard Reed says he likes the folio wind in the willows. Maybe you should send it to me. Uh, Matt Sheridan says, gotta go. Good night to you and all the ships at sea. And Jenny Park says, good night. And I'm saying good night as well. It is 10 past the hour. I have to wrap this up. This was enormous amounts of fun. You are so indulgent of me, all of you. Talking about serial killers just to get my thoughts in order. That was wonderfully generous of you. I am going to check out that subreddit. I may even drop a comment. <laughs> I may even drop a comment. Um, or maybe I'll just amuse myself by looking at it. I'm amazed that they found these videos. It's been a long time. What, what, what would cause them to find them? Maybe somebody did just search on YouTube and maybe they came up. I keep forgetting that I don't have 500 subscribers and I haven't made 10 videos. I, I'm going to feature in a Google, in a YouTube search. It feels kind of weird, but I, I, it's nevertheless true. So, uh, But anyway, it's 10 past the hour. We will meet again for tomorrow's Steve stream. Tomorrow, the Boston Marathon and also the beginning of the first ever criminal trial of an ex-U.S. president. And who knows what else will be in the news tomorrow. So we will we will meet again then, and I will see you all, I hope. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to wrap this up for now and check my email. Um, but I'll be back. Thank you, Booktube. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>